Hi guys, good afternoon. So I'm Attorney Al Jumrani and welcome back to the House of Law. So today I will uh, continue my civil law lecture for the benefit, well primarily for the benefit of the members of the Free Online Law School of the Philippines. But of course I've shared uh, this uh, news about my live streaming today with my um, followers at the Attorney Al Jumrani Facebook page and also if you are following my YouTube channel um, I most probably you have uh, received a notification of my uh, live streaming today so anyway uh, it's a Sunday I know everyone is supposed to be relaxing enjoying the day and trying to what recharge for the coming week and so Hopefully, um, this lecture will help you what, relax. Well, you can relax and at the same time learn something about the law. And today, I will talk about loans and deposits. These two special contracts are still part of the civil law subject in the bar exams. And uh, even if you're not a law student or a bar examinee, hopefully you will find this uh, lecture helpful, especially because sa panahon ngayon, ang daming umuutang I mean, not just during these times but uh, I think the problem is that um, many of us have had some loans prior to the start of the pandemic but because of the pandemic, many of us have had difficulty paying off our loans. But uh, we will be discussing the basics of the law and on the side, we will be what, discussing cases as well and also, if you have some questions about loans about uh, repayments maybe you can comment them uh, in the comment box below okay so let me see if we have some viewers now okay hi Jessri good afternoon okay hi Violi watching from Baguio I miss Baguio I was in Baguio around three weeks ago uh, and uh, this was before the announcement that the Baguio city is no longer requiring antigen uh, negative antigen test results and I suppose or I've heard that and dami dami na raw mga visitors at saka mga tourists ngayon sa Baguio whether it's good for Baguio or not I think uh, ultimately trying to get back to normal is, is good no but at the same time we should not you know let our guard down we should always be very very careful and cautious no especially because medyo tumataas na rin ang cases or ang number of cases ng um, COVID dito sa Pilipinas Ayan. I think yesterday the latest uh, numbers were 7,900 plus so that's almost 8,000 8, but uh, you know uh, I think it's 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 expected no? tagantataas because medyo nag-relax na tayo but at any rate uh, you know we should continue living and we should not stop learning, so to speak. So we should continue learning. Ayan. So hi Jesse Fuentes. Good afternoon, din sa yo. Ayan. So thank you for being the for the few or the first few uh, viewers of the live stream. Now this live stream will cover asigur about two hours, or maybe less or more. Hindi ko masabi. Like yesterday, I was supposed to finish around 3 p.m. Pero mabuti na almost four. I think maybe more than four. Pero okay naman. Uh, you see, sales is uh, a favorite subject of mine because yun yung unang-una ko itinuro talaga sa civil law, sa, sa FEU. And up to this day, I still teach it in both FEU and UE. And of course, as I've said yesterday, sales is perhaps the most common or popular special contract in uh, civil law. So tagang posible tagang may lumabas na tanong dun sa bar. Now, the subject of loans and deposits are also uh, favorite topics or favorite sources of um, questions for the bar. And not just for the bar exam, but also sa law school. Ayan, like what I said, maraming naungutang, so syempre, very relevant ang loans. Sa deposits naman, well, I will explain later now. When we say deposits, they're not the bank deposits that we are... You know, familiar with. Iba naman ang bank deposits. As you will learn in this lecture, bank deposits are treated like loans you know, instead of deposits for the purpose of um, 
safekeeping hindi naman, hindi naman exclusively for safekeeping ang bank deposits but they uh, these deposits are also used by the bank to loan them to uh, their bank depositors or their other borrowers so kaya may bayad sa'yo by way or in uh, in the form of interest ayan okay so welcome 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 all so uh, I, I hope you enjoy your Sunday so dagdag natin to sa productive Sunday nyo itong lecture natin today alright so with that I'd like to start so what are loans ayan so a loan is a contract whereby one of the parties delivers to another either something not consumable so that the latter meaning to say the borrower may use the same for a certain time and return it in which case the contract is called accommodatum or instead of a non-consumable thing money or other consumable thing may be borrowed upon the condition that the same amount of the same kind and quality shall be paid in which case the contract is simply called a loan or a mutuum okay now yung uh, difference lang talaga is that uh, yung subject matter and the purpose no? so the purpose of commodatum is to borrow a non-consumable thing and in the case of a mutuum the subject matter is either money or other consumable thing explain naman natin kung ano sabihin ng consumable or non-consumable now the other difference as you will see from this definition is that uh, in commodatum the same thing will be returned but in mutuum or simple loan it is the same amount of the same kind and quality that shall be returned but instead of the word return the law says or the law uses the word paid kaya sa komodatum hindi payment atawag doon rather return of the thing but then in a loan or in a mutuum we don't say return but we say pay back the loan okay so um, yung komodatum that's of course a legal term but uh, it's also uh, the proper term for those kinds of loans of things that will be used temporarily with the obligation to return it okay so, again, so with that let's proceed okay so who are the parties to a loan the parties to a loan are the bailor and the bailey so who is the bailor the bailor is the giver or the party who delivers possession or custody of the thing bailed. Also, he is called the lender. The bailee is the recipient or the party who receives the possession, custody of or the, of the thing delivered or he is also called the borrower. Okay. Now, para mas madaling maintindihan niyan, ang bailor yung nagpapahiram or who is the source or the giver of the thing borrowed or the amount borrowed on the other hand the bailey is the party or the person who receives the thing or who borrows the thing Ayan. now ginamit lang yung bailor and bailey to uh, refer to the parties common to both types of loan pero pagdating sa komodato mas appropriate ang bailor bailey pagdating naman sa mutuum or simple loan, mas appropriate ang lender-borrower. Okay? Kaya, pag nung umuutang ka sa banko, hindi mo sinasabing the bank is the bailor. But rather, you say the bank is the lender. Okay? But then, if it's a thing that is borrowed, let's say a car, uh, you don't say lender, kasi hindi naman lending person or lending company yung nagpahiram sa'yo ng kotse, but rather, it's just the bailor. Okay, tapos ikaw naman na humiram, hindi ka rin borrow. Well, pwede rin borrower, pero if it's accommodato, we use the term bailey. But at any rate, whether we use the term bailor or bailey, giver or recipient, lender or borrower, dapat we should be familiar about the or about the distinction no? of the, uh, the terms bailor and bailey as well as the other terms. Alright. So let's go now to the types of loan. So we said that the two types of loan are commodatum and mutuum. Or mutuum being the simple loan. So the distinctions are as follows. In commodatum, it ordinarily involves something not consumable. In mutuum, it includes money or other consumable thing. Example of a consumable thing would be uh, food because you consume it. Pwede rin, um, 
even small things small parts that uh, the purpose of which is to consume them rather than returning the exact thing pero sa komodatum it's a non-consumable thing because you don't consume it by consumption kasi by by saying that the thing is uh, non-consumable or consumable the purpose is whether it will be consumed or will be used with the effect of the you know uh, diversion or uh, conversion okay by by the borrower so if it's a thing that's not consumable then the contract is komodatum but if it is consumable then the contract is mituhum okay um, next is that in komodatum the ownership of the thing loaned is retained by the lender okay or the bailor in mituhum the ownership is transferred to the borrower bakit ba nagkakaroon ng transfer of ownership well simply uh, the reason is that in mutuum there is the intention to use the thing and or to consume the thing to consume and to uh, convert it so one cannot be able or one will not be allowed to consume or to convert the thing unless he becomes the owner of the thing so in the case of money the borrower has to become the owner so that he can use the money or convert it by using it for let's say buying personal stuff or buy, or buy other properties or even by lending it the second time okay in komodatum since ownership does not transfer to the borrower the borrower is not allowed to eat it destroy it or even borrow it the second uh, lend it the second time Okay, so yun yung ibig sabihin na dapat there should be transfer of ownership because the intentions of the borrowers in komodatum and mutuum are different. Okay. Next, komodatum is essentially gratuitous. Mutuum may be gratuitous or may be onerous. That is with stipulated interest. So, it is gratuitous because there is no payment of some compensation to the bailor. Because if uh, the Bailey is required to pay some compensation, hindi na po siya komodatum. It becomes a contract of lease. And the compensation would be in the form of a rent. So, napansin nyo, pagka may hinihiram kang bagay, for example, a book, a car, or what, a phone, temporarily, hindi ka naman magbabayad ng, ng uh, any compensation or rent because it's a komodatum it's gratuitous Kumbaga, by the generosity of the bailor but if meron ng uh, rent halimbawa sabihin sa'yo okay you can borrow my car but you pay me 200 pesos a day then the contract is no longer komodatum it now becomes a contract of lease kasi nga meron ng bayad it becomes now an onerous contract okay now in mutuum on the other hand a mutuum may be gratuitous or onerous. Gratuitous when it is the same principal amount that will be returned. So, for example, nangutang ka ng 1,000 pesos. Ang obligation mo is to return the same 1,000 pesos after a certain period or after the stipulated period. Ibawa, ang sabi, okay, you can borrow 1,000 pesos soli mo sa akin after a week. If there is no interest stipulated, then that is a gratuitous mituum. But if there is an interest stipulated, for example, yung sa example na binigay ko, uh, sabi, you can borrow 1,000 pesos and pay me back after a week, but add 100 pesos as interest. So, pag nagkaroon na ng interest, then mituum now becomes onerous. Okay, so it's not uh, correct to say that uh, mutuum is always onerous. Mutuum can also be gratuitous, notwithstanding na merong, merong kasinusoli na payment, no, na bayad. Uh, but what you are paying is actually just the same amount, kaya siya naging gratuitous, kasi walang additional charge. Pero kapag ka may additional charge in the form of an interest, it is now an onerous mutuum. Okay, we'll talk more about uh, interest later, no, uh, especially <coughs> when when it is valid or when uh, the creditor or the bailor cannot charge or require the payment of interest. Okay, next distinction in komodatum, the borrower must return the same thing loaned. So, uh, pagka humiram ka ng libro, you should return the same book. Okay. Now, if the borrower 
uh, is allowed to re to uh, return a different book meaning to say uh, a replacement that's no longer accommodatum okay because meron ng conversion so magiging mituum na siya okay in mituum the borrower need only pay the equivalent of the thing that is the same amount of the same kind and quality so when you borrow money let's say 1000 pesos you return the amount okay of the same kind of course when you say philippine pesos ang hiniram mo babayaran mo rin in philippine pesos or at the same quality now this refers of course to um, other consumable things so sab sabihin natin bigas no so uh, let's say umiram ka ng you borrowed or you loaned one kilo of rice so you you use it mean to say lulutuin mo kakainin mo and then the obligation is to return the same one kilo of rice so the same kind so kung alimbawa dinurado yun so dinurado din now yung quality naman depende kung merong branding na required ang lender mo ang nagpahiram sa'yo then you have to follow that same brand no? or you have to return the same brand ayan so that's the the difference no? in komodatum you have to return the same thing kaya notice that when you borrow from the library tapos nawala mo well of course they will ask you to return the same uh, book with the same serial number with the same markings etc pero pag nawala mo yun then you, you can replace it with another book maybe a later edition etc but that's no longer of course accommodatum but it could be uh, 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 well because there was an obligation that was uh, not paid or settled then you're allowed to replace it with another book pwede na siya maging matatawag nating dasyon in pago no? okay anyway uh, let's proceed so in comodatum it can involve both real or personal property so you can borrow a car that being a personal property or you can also borrow a house okay tulad ng bawa gusto mong tumira muna sa bahay ng pinsan mo or, or brother mo by the beach so that's komodato again assuming na walang bayad okay but if you are required to pay for your stay at that beach front house then that's no longer a komodato but that becomes a contract of lease okay now in mituum the subject matter of the contract is exclusively personal property why? Because uh, hindi naman consumable kasi ang real property. You cannot consume a real property and then return the same amount, the same kind, or same quality. Okay. Now, in Comodatum, the loan is for use or temporary possession. In Mutuum, the loan is for consumption. Okay. Alright. Now, we have been talking about consumable, non-consumable, fungible, and non-fungible things. So, what is the difference? But wait for that. Let me check. Kamusta kayo lahat? Okay, what is the meaning of latter? Okay. Uh, meaning lang po ng latter is yung kasunod or yung latest. If, if there are two terms, for example, let's say uh, apple and orange. Let's say, for example, uh, the statement is like this. Juan gave Pedro an apple and an orange, but the latter turned out to be spoiled. So, ang latter dun is the article or item that is next or that is last okay, in the list or enumeration so apple and orange so orange po yung latter and so hi Jans and hi then Connie Rivera thank you for watching yeah let's continue all right so what are consumable non-consumable fungible and non-fungible things a consumable thing is a thing that cannot be used in a manner appropriate okay I have to say, pasensya na I am using kasi legal definitions or legal terms, no? Uh, maski ako naguguluhan din ako, but, I mean, syempre magulo noon, but, but right now, of course, I just skip the words. I have my own um, understanding immediately from just looking at the terms. Pero, this is, well, I presented the definition as taken from the book, okay? Now, if you are a law student, um, sa simula, Tagang, like my training before was tagang, I memorized the exact term or phraseology as found in the book but as you go along if meron ka ng, you know mastery about the term or about the concept pwede nang you make your own uh, definition or you know understand your conceptualization of the the term 
So in this case, consumable, uh, a consumable thing is a thing that cannot be used in a manner appropriate to its nature without being consumed. So paano ko i-rephrase yan? So a consumable thing is a thing whose nature is to be consumed. Ayan. The nature of a consumable thing is not to be consumed pala. Ayan. So without being consumed. So it's not to be consumed. A non, ay, to be consumed pala kasi consumable. Okay. A non-consumable thing on the other hand is a thing that cannot be used in a manner appropriate to its nature without it being consumed. Okay. So in other words, a non-consumable thing is a thing the nature of which is not to be consumed. Okay. So, fungible thing is one where the parties have agreed to allow the substitution of the thing given or delivered with an equivalent thing. A non-fungible thing, on the other hand, is one where the parties have the intention of having the same identical thing returned after the intended use. Okay, in law school, uh, we were, siguro uh, press tayo experience, the professor will always say, or will always use a an exhibition or a display as an example for example uh, let's say one kilo of rice if that one kilo of rice is uh, length pinahiram ngayon sa isang tao let's say one length or loaned uh, one kilo of rice to Pedro and if Pedro is supposed to return the same one kilo uh, of the same rice of the same quality but not the exact one kilo that was borrowed then that kil that one kilo is is consumable and fungible okay consumable and fungible siya bakit the purpose of that rice is to be consumed tapos fungible siya because it can be substituted but let's say that one kilo of rice will be borrowed by Pedro okay but he will have to return the same or exactly the identical one kilo of rice because he just intended it to be displayed or to be exhibited okay so in that case this rice is consumable but it is non-fungible okay consumable siya which normally should be consumed but then because the obligation is to return the exact one kilo of rice then the borrower is not allowed to consume it because he has to return the exact uh, or the identical item so in that case under the agreement of the parties it is now a consumable but non-fungible okay in comodatum however iisa lang talaga ang allowed uh, meaning to say the thing is both non-consumable and non-fungible Okay, bucket because the thing itself should not be consumed the nature of the thing is it will not be consumed and uh, secondly it it is the same thing that will be returned kaya uh, kung sa mutuum pwede ang consumable and fungible or consumable and non-fungible but then if it is a comodatum the thing is only non-consumable and non-fungible okay kasi nga hindi siya mako-consume at saka kailangan din siya isolit the exact thing or the identical thing will be returned okay so yan I hope uh, kahit to paano di ba na explain natin yung difference as applied in a contract of comodatum and in a mutuum okay next a loan whether comodatum or mutuum is a real contract what does this mean it means that it is perfected only from the time the object of the contract is delivered in obligations and contracts i explained that there are three types of contracts with respect to the perfection of the contract you have consensual contracts real contracts and solemn contracts consensual contracts are those contracts which are perfected by mere consent or meeting of the minds examples of consensual contracts are contracts of sale lease partnership agency Okay. On the other hand, a real contract is a contract which is perfected upon the delivery of the thing. So, example would be both comodatum and mutuum as well as contracts of deposit. In other words, the contract will only become valid and binding upon the delivery of the thing. So, halimbawa, may hihiraming kang 1,000 pesos. Um, <clears throat> 
but uh, the 1,000 pesos will be delivered to you or will be uh, remitted to your bank account only after three days your obligation arises only after or upon your receipt of the 1,000 pesos ibig sabihin upon remittance upon crediting of the 1,000 pesos uh, into your bank account okay question what if um, the loan earns interest of let's say 50 pesos per day okay so let's say the uh, loan was approved on monday pero the proceeds of the loan yung 1000 pesos pumasok lang sa bank account mo ng wednesday so 50 pesos yung interest ibig sabihin ba you will start paying 50 pesos on monday kasi na approve nung monday so, ibig sabihin, 50 pesos Monday, another 50 pesos on Tuesday, tapos 50 pesos on Wednesday. Well, the answer is no. You will start paying the 50 pesos from the time that you receive the 1,000 pesos in your bank account. Okay? Because the contract is perfected only upon the delivery of the thing. Now, okay, next question is that, so ano ang purpose or ano ang validity ngayon ng agreement? So, may approval na. Well, it only becomes or it is only uh, a personal contract one that uh, you know both parties can demand from each other so let's say na approve na ng lunes uh, si borrower now has a right of action against the creditor if the creditor fails or refuses to remit the 1000 pesos into the bank account of the borrower on Wednesday so pwede niyang uh, kasuhan for breach of well it, the promise breach of the promise to lend uh, 1000 pesos but as far as the loan the principal loan is concerned as the obligations of the parties are involved they will all arise starting Wednesday because Wednesday will be the date when the object of the contract will be delivered and so the the, the uh, that rule is the same for commodatum as well as deposits so if you are a borrower you are not bound to return something that you have not yet received diba? so kaya it makes sense that a contract of loan or a contract of deposit is a real contract okay now the last type of contract is the solemn contract so a, a solemn contract is a contract which is perfected upon the execution of the proper form or the prescribed form Pag sinabi natin form, this is the evidence of the contract. If it is a verbal contract, then of course it doesn't require any form. So when you speak of form, it refers to the document. So what are the contracts that must be in a written document for it to become valid and binding? Well, examples are donations, whether real or personal property, also agency uh, to sell real property and lastly a contract of partnership whereby real property is contributed okay and, and here uh, the contract should be in a public instrument as well and also um, an inventory of the real property should be attached to the public instrument as well okay so union now, ito yung question, is an accepted promise to loan a thing actionable? Yes, the accepted promise to deliver something by way of a future loan becomes a consensual contract. Its non-fulfillment will justify the filing of an action for damages. Ayan, so I hope that's uh, clear. Kasi like, I remember, syempre, uh, dumaan din tayo dyan sa pangung utang. Okay? Mayroon pa rin tayo binabayara utang. So, <clears throat> the bank always asks you kung paano mo gustong uh, tanggapin or how the bank will send you the loan proceeds so siguro ngayon syempre hindi na kailangan pumunta sa bank no? because marami ng ways pero I remember being asked na pumunta dun sa main office ng bank so to receive the money so I went to the office of HSBC and then I had to receive it personally syempre nakacheck yun naman yun and then may pinirmahan ako so tagang may confirmation dun na starting today okay, upon the receipt of the loan proceeds then that's the time that the interest will be computed but then the loan was approved several weeks before pero wala pa ako obligation before the actual receipt of the loan 
Kasi nga, under the law, a contract of loan becomes valid and binding only upon the delivery or receipt of the thing or the money to be borrowed. Okay. Now, let us uh, look some. Uh, let us look at some uh, important points in a contract of commodatum as well as in a contract of loan. So let's start with commodatum. So first, it is gratuitous or without compensation because otherwise the contract becomes a lease of things. Number two, generally the bail the bailey does not enjoy the fruits. Otherwise, the contract is a use of fraud. Okay, now. Uh, medyo may, meron na tayong law and property dito no? um, let me just say that uh, a contract of use of fraud is a type of contract whereby the property of another will be um, used by or the property of one person will be used by another for the purpose of receiving the fruits and uh, there is of course the corresponding right to enjoy the thing because you cannot receive the fruits unless you also enjoy or make use of the principal thing so halimbawa the the contract is to make use of a mango plantation mango mango okay either so basta a mango plantation okay so if ang purpose lang is to make use and enjoy the mango plantation without any right to receive the fruits then that's a commodatum now, ang tanong, what if the mangoes are ripe for harvest? So, sino magka-harvest nun? E, ikaw yung in possession of the property. Are you entitled to receive the fruits? Well, if you are only a borrower in accommodatum, you are not entitled to the fruits because you don't become or you are not given the rights of dominion. Ibig sabihin, ownership is not transferred to you. Uh, when you are a borrower in accommodatum so those fruits will belong to the lender or to the bailor so yung may-ari yung nagpahiram sa iyo siya ang pwedeng mag-harvest ng mga prutas okay but if the contract is a use of fruct okay so here the use of fructuary ang tawag sa taong gumagamit ng proper or the, the <laughs> oh, anyway, the person who is allowed to make use of the property in a contract of usufruct is called the usufructuary. Okay, so the usufructuary is entitled to make use of the property and at the same time to receive the fruits. So, dun sa example na ginamit ko, na binigay ko, the usufructuary, while enjoying the property, can harvest the, the ripe mangoes. Okay, because that's part of the contract. Okay, now, let's say it's a contract of lease naman. So, nagbabayad siya ng renta doon sa property. Does the lessee have the right to receive the fruits? Well, generally, no. Okay? Kasi nga, hindi naman siya owner ng property. To the owner belongs the fruits. Okay? But, in their stipulation, the lessee may be allowed to uh, receive the fruits as part of uh, uh, the agreement to make use of the property. Ayan. Okay, so at this sana malinaw yun. No? Basta if you are just borrowing uh, the thing as a borrower in accommodatum or as a daily in accommodatum, you are not allowed to receive the fruits. Now, of course, the fruits, the type of fruits that I used as example are all, are the what we call natural fruits. What if the property earns income? Halimbawa, it is being rented. So, yung rent naman, syempre, mapupunta yun dun sa owner pa din, dun sa bailor. Hindi sa'yo. Kasi nga, possession lang sa'yo. Eh. You're not allowed uh, to receive the fruits because to the owner belongs the fruits in accommodato. Unless, of course, it's a contract of use of rock. Kasi sa use of rock, lahat ng fruits dyan kasama. So, natural fruits, industrial fruits, and civil fruits. Okay, next. The bailor or the lender need not be the owner. Okay? So, for example, a lessee of a thing Okay. may lend it to another okay uh, kahapon I discussed uh, lease okay so sabi ko sublease is allowed okay so but then pwedeng may stipulation against sublease so ang tanong what if there is a stipulation against sublease pero si Leslie pinatira niya dun sa bahay na yon ang kapatid niya Okay, so, bawa, o malis sa bahay muna, sabi niya, okay, kasi yung pinsan, uh, say kapatid or pinsan, kasi yung kapatid niya, okay, yung kapatid niya, halimbawa, 
uh, needed the place for some uh, training no ano ba sa sa Makati yung bahay uh, na nirerentahan ni Lesi na yung kapatid niya na galing sa province needs a place to stay in Makati habang nagti-training siya kasi seaman siya halimbawa no so let's say 2 weeks yung training so pina pinatira ngayon ni Lesi pinatira ngayon ni Lesi yung kapatid niya will that violate the prohibition against sublease Well, the answer is no kasi hindi naman 'yon sublease. Because when you say sublease, merong pang merong renta na involved. So ang ginawa ng lessee, instead of subleasing it to his brother, pinahiram niya 'yung unit niya sa kapatid niya. So that's accommodatum kasi nga libre, walang bayad. Okay. So that's an example of, you know, makita niyo 'yung difference ngayon ng lease, difference between lease and accommodatum. Uh, So, a bailor or the person who lends a thing need not be the owner. Okay? Because hindi natin ina-apply sa komodatum yung nemo dat quod non habet na binanggit ko kahapon sa law on lease lecture ko. Remember, nemo dat quod non habet means you cannot sell what you do not own. So, as a seller, you should be the owner. If you are not the owner, at least you have the authority of the owner. So, for example, you are an agent. Of the seller, yeah. Or whether you are the executor or administrator of the estate, okay, to which the property belongs. So, nemo dat ko don have it yon, okay. But in komodatum, you can lend something even if you are not the owner. Now, because that is a general rule, that rule can be modified or can be restricted by the bailor. Okay, so or the yes by the owner of the property. So kung ikaw nagpahiram ng libro, pwede mo sabihin na okay, di mo pwede ipahiram yan. Or iba ba? If you are the lessor, sabi mo ang lessee, you cannot allow someone else to make use of the property either by way of sublease or by way of komodato. Okay, so if if you are a property owner, tapos you are so used to saying or stipulating against sublease. Isali nyo na ngayon okay, If you are listening and watching now Isali nyo ngayon sa stipulations nyo Yung komodatum That a lessee cannot sublease Nor lend the leased premises By way of komodatum Okay? Alright Now, komodatum is purely personal Ano ibig sabihin ng komodatum being a, pure, uh, being a contract that is purely personal? So, first is that The death of either the bailor or the bailey Extinguishes the contract It means that when when the bailor dies, even though the contract or the loan is good for a period longer, but then na matay bigla yung bailor, kailangan ng isoli ni bailey or borrower yung thing. Okay. Similarly, if the bailey dies, kailangan rin isoli ng mga heirs niya yung property. Okay. Bakit ganon? But kailan isoli? Well, because the contract is personal, the contract is based on trust and confidence, based on personal qualifications of the parties, and the death of a person extinguishes the privilege to borrow as well as the duty to lend the object. Okay. Now, if, however, in the contract, si nabi don na the borrower or the komodatum will be for one month. Bawa, it's a house to be borrowed by a relative and his family. Pwede nilang pwede nilang isulat do sa kontrata nila. They can agree and stipulate in their contract that the bailey will use the property for one month, and in case of his death, then his heirs can continue to enjoy the property until the expiration of the komodatum or the period of the komodatum. So yun, by stipulation yun Pero if there is no stipulation Then the death of either the bailor or the bailey Terminates the contract Okay, next is the bailey can neither lend nor lease the object of the contract to a third person However, the members of the bailey's household May make use of the thing loaned Unless there is a stipulation to the contrary Or unless the nature of the thing forbids its use So, meron, tayo, meron tayong uh, rule na pag pinahiram sa iyo sa iyo mo lang uh, ikaw lang pwedeng gumamit no hindi hindi mo pwedeng ipagamit sa iba because that will violate the trust and confidence which is of course essential in a contract of komodatum but of course 
if you are let's say head of a family or a member of a family your children okay uh, and other members of the household may be allowed to make use of the thing so limbawa kotse yan hinira mo sa kapatid mo yung kotse so may family ka so pwedeng gamitin na asawa mo or anak mo yung yung uh, kotse except when there is a stipulation to the contrary ayan so this is again pursuant to the freedom to contract of the parties in a contract of comodato as well as in all other contracts okay all right so next okay now let's talk about uh, obligations of the bailey in a comodato so first is to pay ordinary expenses for the use and preservation of the thing loaned Okay, so what are these ordinary expenses? These are similar to necessary expenses. Necessary expenses or ordinary expenses are those expenses related to the normal wear and tear of the thing. Now, if you were listening to my lecture yesterday on lease, under the law on lease, the lessor okay, pays for the necessary expenses or ordinary expenses of the thing. But here the rule is different. It's the bailey or the borrower who pays for the ordinary expenses of the thing. Okay. Uh, di ko maalala kung nagwamta ko na example yesterday on necessary expenses. But let's say, okay, the property or the thing borrowed is a condominium unit. Okay. Yeah. I think I think gwamta ko example yesterday. Sabi ko pag that pag sinabi nating necessary expenses, this would this would refer to the necessary what uh, facilities of the of the property let's say to be kuryente yung ganyan okay let's say it's a condominium unit tapos may may issue sa too big no because of let's say faulty or old uh, plumbing uh, so merong sorry, may leak if it's a contract of lease it should be the lessor who should fix it okay so as a lessee you should inform or notify the lessor of the need to repair the water leak and the lessor is under obligation to repair the leak now what if the condominium unit was borrowed by way of komodatum ibig sabihin yung borrower hindi nagbayad okay? hindi siya nagbayad ng any compensation or rent or lease okay so tapos may water leak so should the borrower inform the lender about uh, the water leak? Yes, of course, he should. At least para alam naman na ni lender kung ano nang sitwasyon ng kanyang unit. But who is liable or who will be responsible for fixing the water leak? Here, because it is accommodatum, it should be the borrower. Okay? Because the borrower under the law is liable for the ordinary expenses. And the reason is not hard to grasp or hard to understand. Why? Because hindi ginagamit mo siya ng libre. Okay? You were allowed to make use and enjoy of the thing for free. Kasi nga wala ng rent. So it's but you know fair na ikaw nang gumastos for the um, repair of the water leak. Because after all, that's uh, you know th that is related to the enjoyment of the thing. So if you want to enjoy the thing, if you want to continue enjoying the thing, then it is your duty to have it repaired or fixed. Okay, so yun po yun. Now again, just like in any other contract, for as long as it's not contrary to law or public policy, the parties can stipulate. Kasi, for example, yung uh, uh, lender or the owner of the property may have uh, let's say a plumber of choice or meron siyang preferred na um, let's say uh, fixtures to be used for purposes of replacing the old fixtures then pwedeng they can stipulate that it is uh, his job or it is his duty to have it repaired now pwede naman din na i-charge ngayon kay kay borrower yung expenses at least yung reasonable expenses kasi nga after all under the law naman talaga it's the borrower who should uh, shoulder the ordinary expenses for the use and preservation of the thing loan okay next is to take care of uh, the, the thing with the diligence of a good father of a family so in obligations and contracts we said that uh, the uh, degree of diligence of a good father of a family is simply simple diligence 
So what is simple diligence? Well, simply, if you are a good father of a family, okay, how would a good father of a family take care of a thing? Now, of course, he would be careful, he would be cautious in order to prevent or avoid damage or injury. Yeah. So, well, of course, it's just simple diligence naman. No? So, alibawa, pagka meron kang hiniram na kotse, okay? so, how would you drive the car? Of course, you would drive the car as normal as possible. Uh, hindi mo naman siya, I mean, i- iiwasan mo na magasgas or ma-accidente, etc. That's just simple diligence. Now, in other contracts, so, for example, in the delivery or in a contract of common carriage, Okay, so, alibawa, goods are delivered uh, by uh, a common carrier. The common carrier has to exercise extraordinary diligence naman in the handling and in the delivery of the thing. Okay, so, uh, extraordinary diligence is the diligence that goes beyond the simple diligence. So, kung kotse yan, halimbawa, uh, i-deliver ng isang common carrier, syempre hindi niya i-drive yan. Okay? Why? Because extraordinary diligence requires that it should be transported. So, isasakay niya yan sa flatbed na, ang tawag doon, truck. Ayan. So, a towing truck that has a flatbed. So, isasakay niya doon, isasampan niya doon sa taas, sa kanya ihahatid yung sasakyan. Pero if it's just a good father of a family, drive lang niya yan. Basta careful yung driving niya, following traffic rules and regulations, and avoiding accidents or damage to the car. Alright. So, ganun yun. Now, next, acom- uh, in accommodatum, a borrower shall be liable for the loss. Ayan. Even if the loss is through a fortuitous event. So, what is a fortuitous event? Of course, in your obligation and contracts, you will remember that a fortuitous event is, well, basically something that cannot be uh, avoided. Or it may be, uh, sorry, something that is unforeseen or even though foreseen cannot be avoided Ayan. so alibawa unforeseen would be um, ano ba alibawa lightning no? lightning is unforeseen you don't usually get struck by a lightning but then the things that are foreseen but cannot be avoided are for example typhoons Ayan. so foreseen siya kasi you know every year we have a typhoon season so unavoidable siya okay so, those are examples of unforeseen or uh, examples of fortuitous events. But we are not saying na limited lang siya to natural events but there, because there are also fortuitous events that are man-made. For example, um, uh, legislation, uh, government policies, yung ganyan. So, those are unforeseen or even though foreseen cannot be avoided events. Okay. So, a borrower is liable for loss of the thing even if the cause or the reason for the loss is a fortuitous event in the following cases. Okay? So, normally, pag uh, fortuitous event yan, the obligor or the borrower is not liable kasi nga unforeseen or even though foreseen, it's unavoidable. But if the borrower okay, commits any of the following, then he shall be liable for the loss of the thing. Okay? Um, again, even though uh, it is due to a fortuitous event. For example, the borrower devotes the thing to any purpose different from that which it has been loaned. So, for example, uh, the thing was borrowed, kasi kotse, no? Ang kotse, hiniram, only, supposedly, only for personal use. Pero ginawang grab car ni borrower na hindi alam ni, ni lender, hindi alam nung nagpahiram. So, pag nawala yung kotse na yun or nasira yung kotse na yun because of a storm, then he shall be liable. The borrower shall be liable because he was guilty of you know, devoting it to a different purpose. Okay, next. Um, if he keeps it longer than the period stipulated or after the accomplishment of the use for which the commodatum has been constituted. So, here, para siyang similar to delay or default. So, in obligations and contracts, if the obligor is already in delay or default, any loss that is caused or due to fortuitous, uh, fortuitous event shall be on the account of the obligor. So, ganun din. No? For a borrower who has retained or detained uh, the thing, uh, he shall be li- liable for loss of the thing even though the loss was due to a fortuitous event. 
Alright. Next, the thing loaned has been delivered with appraisal of its value unless there is a stipulation exempting the bailey from responsibility in case of fortuitous event. So, bakit nga ba liable ang isang uh, bailey if there is an appraisal? Ibig sabihin lang kasi na appraisal is that you assume uh, the risk of loss and this is the value of the thing. So, in a contract of commodatum, if at the commencement of the contract, the bailor gives the bailey an appraisal or a valuation of the thing, it only means that uh, the bailor wants to tell the bailey that in case mawala yan, this is the value of the thing. So, if the bailey accepts that appraisal, then that means uh, he shall be liable for replacing or for paying the value of the thing when it is lost, even though caused by a fortuitous event. Of course, there is exception unless there is a stipulation exempting the bailey from responsibility in case of fortuitous event. Okay, next is if the borrower lends or leases the thing to a third person who is not a member of the household because this would be a violation of the personal nature of a commodatum. And lastly, being able to save the thing borrowed or his own, he preferred to save his own. Now, if you uh, ask me, bakit ganun? Parang you are being penalized for saving your own property. E di ba dapat unahin mo talaga yung sarili mo? Di ba? Well, it's true. No? Self-preservation is a valid ground. But then, only in criminal cases siguro, no? Uh, in case of, let's say, damage to property, mas inuna mo yung sarili mo. Halimbawa, gayto, nagda-drive ka ano, ngayon while you're driving and then um, you meet an accident, an emergency situation. So, in order to avoid being hurt or in order to avoid uh, serious damage to your car, you swerve, may binangga ka, may nabangga ka, let's say, bahay, restaurant, or let's say, uh, isang kotse, another car, and your reason is that, well, I was faced by this uh, startling and emergency situation, so I wanted to save, well, of course, my natural instinct or reflex is to save myself. Well, that is an extenuating ground. In other words, that's a valid defense because that's a, a case for tort and damages anyway. So, uh, it's an exculpatory defense no? when you choose your life over let's say uh, the property of another but then it's a different thing pag kakomodatum because sa komodatum you, you are supposed to prioritize the thing borrowed kasi nga pinagkatiwala sa'yo you were entrusted with the thing and uh, as a borrower you have to exercise due diligence the diligence of a good father of a family saka lalo na hinihira mo na nga ng libre, wala na nga bayad syempre dapat priority or i-prioritize mo yung uh, safety at saka yung uh, what, uh, preservation of the thing but if you chose your own then you shall be liable for for the thing. Now, kung kung, kung, kung na-experience yun yun, di ba, meron kang hiniram na, let's say, gadget yan, di ba, parang lagi mo talaga aalagaan mo talaga yan kasi nga isusoli mo pa, di ba so, well, I don't know if you have tried uh, this, but let's say may hiniram ka na uh, damit or let's say uh, wardrobe, and so kailangan mo doon sa event na yon tapos ngayon siyempre umulan or something because I remember during my high school days may, may kaklase akong gano'n, no? may hiniram siyang gown, so yung hiniram niyang gown uh, gagamitin na niya for that purpose for the JS, but then ang nangyari umulan, so that's why he had, she had to uh, make sure na hindi madumihan o hindi, hindi maputikan yung kanyang gown kahit na mabasa, mabasa pa siya mabasa pa yung bag niya or something so that is indeed being consistent with the obligation of a borrower okay, to take care you know, of the thing borrowed because otherwise if he chose to if the borrower chose to save his own thing over that of the thing borrowed he shall be liable for loss of the thing borrowed okay the next obligation of the borrower is to return the thing of course you borrowed the thing marunong ka manghiram marunong ka humiram then marunong matuto ka ding magsole 
So the, the about the return of the thing, the Bailey cannot retain the thing except for damages by reason of hidden defects or flaws of the thing loaned. So this is an exception or this is um what an excuse for not returning the thing. So this is what we call um, the uh, re, re, uh, lien and the uh, possessory or the retention lien of the uh, the bailey or the borrower. So, despite the obligation to return the thing, the borrower may retain the thing if the borrower has a claim for damages against the lender in case the thing has hidden defects or flaws. And as a result of those hidden defects or flaws, the borrower suffered some damage or injury. So, a purpose lang ng retention is to make sure na bayaran siya ni, ni lender or ni bailor ng uh, amount or ng rightful compensation because of the um, what to call it because of the uh, damage or injury suffered as a result of the as a result of the use of the thing okay zoom ko ng konti ayan okay kasi nakikita nyo yung labata ko sa likod <laughs> alright I hope it's being fixed oh, hindi pa ata wait lang ha okay anyway so let's continue ayan na zoom na rin Okay. So next, what are the obligations of the bailor? Okay. So first is to respect okay, the right of the bailey to use the thing. So katulad din yan sa contract of lease. In a contract of lease, the lessor has to respect the peaceful enjoyment of the lessee. Well, of course, as interpreted by the Supreme Court, that's legal possession naman no? Uh, but of course, necessarily the lessor has to make sure that the lessee, you know, is undisturbed. Okay, kung just sa property niyan, walang mga uh, disturbance. So ganun din, no? um, uh, the bailor has to respect the right of the bailey to use the thing. So kung pinahiram mo ang libro mo sa kaklase mo for one month, wag mo mo nang bawiin before the one month period kasi nga you have to respect the agreement the agreement is that uh, he will use it for one month now there are instances however when the bailor can demand the return of the thing before the stipulated uh, expiration date or before the stipulated last date to make use of the thing so first is you know expiration of the period stipulated next is accomplishment of the use for which the commodatum was constituted or intended next if the bailor should have urgent need for the thing he may demand the return or temporary use thereof or if the bailey committed an act of ingratitude okay now uh yung dun sa if the bailer should have an urgent need for the thing so of course it has to be you know, established that there is in fact an urgent need of the thing because if it's not too urgent then uh, the bailer has to respect the right of the bailey to um, you know to complete or to at least finish the contract okay next is if the bailey committed an act of grat ingratitude ano to ingratitude well in Tagalog we just call it parang uh, being uh, walang walang utang na loob okay so that's ingratitude but in legal parlance an act of in ingratitude particularly as applied in kasi halos pare-parehas lang naman ang ang, ang, ang concept no uh, where else do we use ingratitude as a ground for disqualifying a person in succession okay so in succession in the law and succession a person or an heir is uh, guilty of ingratitude when number one he files and uh, well he sues or he charges uh, the decedent with uh, an act or with a crime against persons or property um, also when he commits uh, an act or a crime against persons and um, property against the decedent or against the testator so ganun din no? so in comodatum if uh, the borrower commits an act or a crime or an act that is deemed a crime against persons or property uh, against the lender or against the bailor then the bailor can of course take back the the, the thing borrowed even though it's not related to the comodatum ha Okay, next also is in case, uh, you know, they are embroiled or in, involved in a case uh, involving, let's say, crimes against you 
persons or property. So yun. So those are examples of acts of ingratitude na recognized by law to disqualify a person who is entitled to the generosity of another. The same is also applicable in donations nga pala. So halimbawa, meron kang dinonate na kotse, dinonate mo sa pinsan mo or sa pamangkin mo, tapos this uh, nephew now commits an act against persons sa pagkatao mo. Halimbawa, sinaksa ka or attempted to commit homicide against you, then pwede mong bawiin yung dinonate mo. You can revoke the donation. Okay, next is precarium. So, what is precarium? Precarium, from the word precarious, okay, you mean to say temporary so or indefinite. So, in uh, precarium, it is a kind of commodatum where the bailor may demand the thing at will. Okay, so it's not subject to a specific period. So, halimbawa, merong, merong, merong kang pinahiram, no? So, halimbawa, ulit. Gamitan na ito libro. So, you loaned your book in civil law, for example, by Tolentino, okay, to a friend. So, sasabihin mo, okay, papahiram ko muna sa'yo to dahil hindi ko pa kailangan. Pero pag kailangan ko na, babawiin ko or uh, kukunin ko ulit sa'yo. So, that's an example of a precarium. Alright, next, obligation of the bailor or is to refund ordinary expenses incurred by the bailey. Remember, we said that uh, if uh, the there is no stipulation, then it should be the bailey who should um, uh, spend for ordinary expenses. But okay, if there is a stipulation that it is the bailey who should, uh, uh, if the bailey is not okay, liable for ordinary expenses, then the bailer should refund these ordinary expenses if the bailey shouldered them. Okay, next, to pay damages to the bailey for the injury suffered by reason of the flaws or hidden defects of the thing loan. So, ito yung counterpart or ito yung sagot dun sa right of retention ni, um, ni bailey. Okay, so, if the bailey retains the thing because he claims damages or uh, payment for the injury suffered because of the hidden defects or the flaws of the thing, then the bailor should pay the bailey. Okay, these uh, damages. Okay, this applies only when the bailor was aware of the defects. So, in commodatum, there is no implied warranty against hidden defects. Okay, take note of this qualification that the bailor is only liable for the hidden defects if he was aware of the said hidden defects. Okay, because magkaiba kasi yung warranty against hidden defects in sales uh, and this uh, liability for the hidden defects of the thing borrowed. Alright, now let's talk about mutuo. May medyo mahaba ang discussion natin doon sa ano ah, sa komodatum ah. Okay, so now let's talk about mutuo. So in mutuo, number one, ownership is transferred to the borrower. Again, bakit nga ba? Because the purpose is consumption. And you cannot consume the thing unless you become the owner. Okay? Uh, because consumption is an incident of ownership. To use it, to enjoy it, and even to destroy it. Okay, of course, when you say destroy, you know, maybe it's a bit destruction uh, for ill motives. Destroy meaning to say you have to convert it. So, diba, pera na hiniram mo and you want to use the money that you borrowed to buy a laptop, you cannot make use of that money unless you have the obligation to return it. I mean, to return the same thing. When you borrow money and the purpose of which is consumption, then you trade it. Ibig sabihin, you exchange it for other goods. So, ang obligation mo dun sa nagpahiram sa'yo is only to return or to pay the same amount of the same kind and the same quality. Ayan. Okay. Ayan. Hi, Miss Rosula. Ayan. So, uh, she's, she's with us now. Thank you for watching. Okay. So, let me continue. Now, the obligation of the borrower is to pay or to, oh yes, to pay, not to return the equivalent of the thing. Now, a loan is a debt. It's not a trust. Okay. If you have already taken the law on trusts, so a trustee receives the thing with the obligation of keeping it um, and what managing the property for the benefit of the beneficiary. And the trustee has to return or to um, deliver the thing to the beneficiary as when the time comes. Okay? Now, it's the same thing to be returned or to be delivered to the beneficiary. The same thing as received by the trustee from the trustor will be delivered to the beneficiary. 
but in a contract of loan walang ganung obligation no um, it's not a trust relationship but rather it's a contra it's a debt so the borrower accepts the thing or accepts the money is allowed to use it with an obligation to return or to pay the same amount okay, of the same kind and same quality ayan okay now wag lang kayo mako confuse dahil sinabi ko kayo na trust and confidence iba naman kasi ang trust iba ang trust and confidence sa trust relationship although of course a trust relationship is also based on trust and confidence trust that the trustee will I mean trust and confidence that the trustee will perform his obligations under the trust agreement and to deliver the thing uh, when the time comes um, to the judiciary in addition to that the trustee is also expected to recognize the ownership either of the trustor or the trustee in the thing so dito sa loan walang ganun a borrower accepts the thing and he doesn't have any obligation to recognize the ownership of uh, the lender over the property because ownership is transferred to the borrower so that he may make use of the thing okay of course what he must constantly or always remember is that he has an obligation to pay uh, the creditor yun lang pero as to the ownership of the thing wala na mata transfer na sa kanya yun for the for his purpose no for the reason for the reason that he wanted to make use of that money now note that section 20 article 3 of the constitution prohibits imprisonment for non-payment of a debt so ano ibig sabihin nun? if it's a civil obligation then there is no penal provision or there's no penalty for non-payment of a debt because a debt is only a civil obligation and thus the remedy of a um, lender is to collect the debt okay through of course a court action in a civil case now hindi masyado kasama dito sa discussion but let me just discuss it nonetheless because you might be uh, interested in this matter bakit ganon merong mga nangutang pero nakulong okay so there are two uh, as recognized instances no as far as i'm aware well three actually three um una under bp22 okay but what the law punishes there is not of course, I explain ko lang na konti anong context ng BP-22. So, in BP-22, alimbawa, um, sasabi ko bakit ko sinight ang BP-22. The situation is like this. Nangutang ka sa banko, nag-issue ka ng post-dated checks. Okay? Uh, and these checks were, or coincided, these checks coincided with the term of the loan. So, alimbawa, the loan is good for one year. So, as repayment, you were asked to deliver or to provide 12 post dated checks and those checks would be deposited by the lender on the dates stated on the face of the check so limbawa ang utang mo will be payable every fifth day of the month so kaya let's say january 5 feb 5 so on and so forth now yun ang payment mo ng utang mo Ngayon, dinipost nga, nagkaroon ng problema. Lasi nagkaroon ng pandemic, wala ka ngayon pambayad. So, hindi mo napondohan ngayon yung checking account mo. Dinipost ito ngayon ng banko. Kasi, yun naman talaga ang, ang agreement. Kaya, under the contract, you will fund or you will pay the checks or you will pay the installments or amortizations through post-dated checks. So, the installments will become due on the dates provided. So, as your promised mode of payment sabi mo, ang pangako mo is that I will pay you through checks so kaya babayaran mo, kaya ididiposito ngayon ni banko ngayon, dinipositoy yung cheque pero tumalbog kasi wala ka ng pondo papailan ka ngayon ng BP22 as the accused can you invoke section 20 article 3 of the constitution sabi mo, no person shall be imprisoned for non-payment of a debt well, the answer is no the invocation of section 20 article 3 of the constitution is misplaced why because the essence of bp22 is the issuance of a check that doesn't have sufficient funds or a check that is drawn against a closed account the purpose of the law the purpose of bp22 is to preserve the integrity of the checks para hindi nagiging joke ang pag-issue ng cheque now 
yung fact na those checks were issued by the borrower in a contract of loan that's separate entirely you know? although it is related but uh, you are not being imprisoned for non-payment of, of the obligation but rather you are being charged criminally and being prosecuted for not maintaining sufficient funds for those checks because those checks represent you know a stable uh, what banking industry I think now if you can call it that no it is supposed to you know uh, well having a good uh, banking industry means that you know these equivalents or these alternatives to money can be traded as safely as money itself Ayan. So, ang ginawa mo, nag-issue ka ng check eh. At the time, you thought it was funded, pero it could be funded. But it turns out, hindi mo na ma-fund dahil nga sa nahirapan ka na because of the pandemic and all that. But the law is the law. Okay? Dura lex said lex. So, kaya you will be prosecuted for the checks and not for the for your non-payment of the debt. Okay, another instance is when estafa. Ayan. So, sabi nila, pa, paano ka madidemanda ng estafa? Eh, utang lang naman to. Yes, that's true. Maganda yung argument mo because again, Section 20, Article 3 of the Constitution states, no person shall be imprisoned for non-payment of a debt. But then, the law on estafa punishes not the non-payment of the debt but rather the use of fraud or deceit in availing uh, a loan. So, alabawa, nangutang ka but then, alabawa, the accused. Ayoko naman sabihin ikaw ang nangutang ka. Let's say the accused okay, loaned money, borrowed money but seriously, he did not have any intention to pay. Ayan. So, hindi, wala talaga siyang intention talaga magbayad because nang, nanginiral or umiiral. Umiral. Ayan. Umiral yung kanyang excitement just to get the money. Kasi, bawa, na-approve siya sa loan. Uh, bawa, na-approve yung kanyang application. So, he got so excited pero wala naman talaga siyang plano. But is the lack of plan or does the lack of plan to pay or lack of intention to pay uh, it must it be uh, manifest in the beginning or should it be manifest in the uh, no, uh, after the uh, after the loan or after obtaining the loan the intention must have been manifest or the lack of intention to pay must be present at the time of getting the loan Ayan. so kaya hindi ka pwede file ng estafa kung yung lack of intention mo to pay is after the after obtaining the loan dapat the prosecution must prove that the accused at the time of obtaining the loan really did not have the intention to pay so yun, so assuming ganun nga nangyari nangutang siya, tapos wala talaga si intention to pay then there is estafa Okay, so, estafa there punishes the deceit or the fraud committed against the creditor. So, naiiwasan natin yan yung Section 20, Article 3. Okay, ang pinakahuling example where um, a person can still be prosecuted for something that is related to a loan of money is when you use your credit card. So, under the Access uh, Device Access Regulations Act, okay, there's a provision there na it is criminal to use a credit card and to avail of services of the credit card meaning to say the service of the bank to pay off your purchases that's that's the service that you are availing if the borrower or or if the card holder did not have sufficient money uh, to pay off his obligation when the time comes because kung dinamit mo ang credit card mo na hindi mo hindi ka gumawa ng provision for payment of that money uh, of that purchase there's a presumption that you uh, had no intention or you are not in a position to pay okay kaya maraming mga nag-issue ng credit card sorry nag uh, gumamit ng credit cards na hindi nagbaba na hindi nakapagbayad na sinasampahan ng kaso under the device access regulations act kasi um yun na nga based on their financial standing at the time so hindi naman pala kayang bayaran pero gamit lang ng swipe lang ng swipe ng credit card so don ang ang penalty don or what the law punishes is not the non-payment of the debt but using your card irresponsibly 
Okay, of course, irresponsibly, of course, connotes fraud. Ayan. Pero kung halimbawa, at the time you charge your card or you used your card, meron ka naman talagang pambaya tapos biglang nagkaroon ng emergency. So, yung pondo mo, nagamit na yun sa ibang bagay. Now, that's not fraud. Okay, so hindi ka pwedeng demanda doon. But then, you know, the law is there. Uh, the bank or any credit card company will make use of that. So, defense mo na ngayon. Nasa yun na ngayon yung defense. No? You have to prove that there was no fraud at all and the reason for non-payment of the credit card uh, services was purely unexpected and unavoidable. So, yeah. so at least now you know. No? Well, as a rule, Section 20, Article 3 protects a borrower or a debtor from criminal prosecution. But if the act can fall or will fall under BP 22, under estafa or under violation of the device access and regulations act then merong criminal prosecution doon so ingat ingat po tayo sa pangungutang uh, when uh, when so it happens that we are unable to pay so only borrow what you need and what you can pay back okay, that's always a rule of thumb mangutang ka dapat ang uutangin mo is less than your capacity to pay Kasi pagka ang inutang mo is more than your capacity, talagang mahihirapan ka dyan. Do not count your taba, eggs before they are hatched or do not count your chicken before chickens before they are hatched or something like that. Okay? So, kung wala pa yung pera na yun, huwag mo siyang isasama dun sa budget mo. Yung bang sasabihin mo, ah, okay lang next month makakabenta ako ng sampung sapatos, ganyan, or something. Or uh, next month, magkakaroon ako ng racket next month. So, mangungutang na ako ngayon kasi by next month may pambayad na ako. Pag hindi pa dumarating yun, then huwag mo isama, isasama yung sa budget mo. Doon sa budget mo, dapat yung existing budget mo. Okay? So, that way, you can manage your finances and you can avoid, you know, having troubles with uh, creditors. Alright. Sorry, medyo humaba tayo doon na. Okay, number two. Okay, the object of mutuum is a fungible thing. So, what does that mean? So, fungible things are not to be returned but substituted or replaced with the equivalent of the thing, meaning another thing of the same kind, quality, quantity. Okay, alam natin yan. Okay, next. Ito na tayo sa interest. No interest shall be due unless it is stipulated in writing. So, us usurious loans presuppose the imposition of an interest for more than or in excess of what is fair and reasonable. Okay, that's just a preliminary statement, no? So, when you're asked, ano sabihin ng usurious loans? Or what are, what is usury? So, usurious loans or usury are unfair loans or loans with unfair and exorbitant interests. Now, wala na po tayong usury law, wala na po tayong cap. No, there's no more cap on interest. So, the parties can stipulate uh, as to the interest and uh, if both parties agree especially if the debtor or the borrower accepts the interest rate then that is binding upon the borrower or the debtor so wala na po tayong cap or ceiling now the banking industry however is regulated by um, by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas so uh, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas can impose or put a ceiling on interest rates so pwede let's say 6% 7% for um housing loans but even then uh, it's not really a ceiling but rather it's a directive for the banks to use the uh, market market in what well, market law or the law of the markets so that uh, the interest rate may vary uh, regularly kaya nagre-repricing ang mga banko as far as their interests are concerned okay now um next is that for personal loans sabihin yung loans between persons who are not engaged in the banking or lending industry halimbawa si Juan sa si Pedro nagpaut nagpautang si Juan kay Pedro ganyan so generally wala po tayong cap doon so if at the time of the loan kaya naman ni Pedro sabi niya oh sige kaya ko yan 6% per month okay no problem may pera ako ngayon okay, kaya kong bayaran yan and I'll do my best to pay you uh, the principal loan as well as the interest so that is binding upon uh, binding upon Pedro okay now if circumstances will become dif difficult later on 
then since you know a contract is the law between the parties pedro has to do something about it he has to make sure that he honors the contract he honors his obligation to juan because juan has an expectation now if however juan is kind enough to allow pedro you know a staggered or a longer period to pay just so pedro can still pay then good kasi sa part ng creditor two choices lang yan eh number one the first choice is pag pinilit mo yung kontrata mo then there's a possibility that the debtor will default ibig sabihin hindi talaga siya magbabayad but if you will be kind and you're open to some sort of rearrangements with the debtor at least meron kang maasahan na bayad o diba so pumili ka kung ikaw creditor Ngayon, you can always say, well, I will insist on the contract. Well, go ahead. But then, what's the price of that? You can, of course, go to court. But then, uh, gagastos ka pa, di ba? You go to court, you pay for a lawyer, you pay for the filing fees. And even if you, however, uh, for example, win the case, ang tanong, meron ka ba talaga makukuha from, from Pedro, the borrower, at the time when, uh, when uh, the decision has been rendered in your favor, how many years would that take? And secondly, what if yung sitwasyon ni Pedro when that time comes is worse than the time, than this time, for example, when he is actually asking that he be allowed or given an extension. So, clearly, ano yan, uh, risk talaga yun ni creditor. So, but then, as much as possible, you know, on the part of the borrower, okay, honor your contract, honor your agreement. You know, a contract is the law between the parties. So, dura lex sed lex. It may be harsh, but it is the law. Now, under, of course, because of the present circumstances, um, medyo mahirap nga ngayon to fulfill our obligations. But, uh, you know, it is not really an excuse for us not to pay. It can be an excuse for us to pay later or to pay in a staggered basis. So, ano yung pag-usapan nyo na lang with the creditor. Alright, having said that, sabi natin, although the usury law has been repealed, the courts can reduce unreasonable and unconscionable interest. Pero, only the interest rate. Pero, hindi ka pwede pumunta sa court para to ask the court na i-waive na yung obligation. Because the waiver of the obligation is the sole discretion of the creditor. Diba pag naawa siya? Now, of course, if your borrow, if your creditor is the government, ganyan, normally you can ask the government naman, especially if the government has this condonation program or amnesty program. Okay, pero private companies rarely go into or allow uh, amnesty or condonation programs. Alright. Okay, so thank you very much sa talagang nag... nag <laughs> who stayed until now okay so ayan well parehas tayo from my end and your end parehas tayong nilalabanan ng antok no but since this is my commitment to you and of course you know uh, this is perhaps my free time kasi you know, next week exams na and all that siya mag holy week na so ayan. let us do what we can today huwag natin huwag tayo magpo-procrastinate alright so we're doing it now so let's do this Okay, next. If the borrower pays interest where there is no stipulation in writing, therefore, then that payment is unconscionable and illegal. Okay, so the borrower who pays the interest can ask that it be returned or it be refunded under the concept of solutio in debiti or natural obligation shall apply. Okay. Now, what is solution in debity or natural obligations? Again, I hope you have already taken your obligations and contracts, particularly quasi-contracts and natural obligations. For solution in debity, it simply is a quasi-contract whereby the person who receives something by mistake has the obligation to return it okay, to the person who gave it. Okay, so for example, yung borrower in a situation or in a loan whereby the interest rate is not stipulated in writing, therefore there is no right to demand interest, then the creditor should return the interest, okay, interest payment. Because the law makes it wrong 
okay, to be enriched at the expense of another. So a creditor who receives that interest will be enriched at the expense of the borrower, especially because that creditor has no right to receive or to retain the interest payment in the first place because walang stipulation in writing. Okay, next, natural obligation. Okay, so for ito naman is the counterpart of solution in debity. Okay. In natural obligation, okay, the creditor has the right to retain something that was paid voluntarily even though the payer knew that he had no obligation to make the payment. Okay? So I hope mali know you. Okay. Let's say the borrower paid interest alam niyang wala namang stipulation in writing. So, he should know that he is not liable to pay interest. This is assuming that alam niya ang batas, that he is not liable to pay interest if the interest is not in writing. Okay. So, despite knowing that he is not liable to pay interest, nagbayad pa din siya voluntarily. The creditor did not force him, did not compel him to make payment, to make interest payment, and yet the debtor made interest payment in that case the creditor can retain what has been paid voluntarily okay so kaya dun sa rule na no interest shall be imposed unless there is a stipulation in writing and no exception dun? an ex ang exception dun is that when there is uh, an interest an agreement a verbal agreement to pay interest and the borrower makes payment despite the fact that he is aware that no interest can be imposed if it's not in writing then a natural obligation arises and the creditor can retain or keep what has been paid by the debtor Ayan. I hope na intindihan nyo pa din yan ha? okay anyway one who has allowed another to assume apparent ownership of personal property for the purpose of okay wag na natin basahin niya mag yan Okay, so let's talk about uh, some cases on comodatum and mutuum. Okay, <clears throat> by the way, I just want to thank uh, everybody for for again watching my videos. Ganyan. Um, you see, the most you can do is just to support me. No, everything here is for free. You can watch my YouTube videos anytime, anywhere. If you are reviewing for the bar. Um, I hope uh, kahit pa paano nakatulong this is not of course a substitute for formal bar review so you review with the bar review centers classes will start sometime in June um, and then until October ata yan. so please um, study, please enroll kasi makakatulong sa inyo yan now this one of course you're not paying me any cent you're just watching and of course in return i i get some views and we'll see if if uh youtube will will help me uh you know enroll or join the partnership the ypp i think it, they call it U youtube partnership program i haven't even joined it yet because i'm not qualified but that's just secondary the first i know is that you know this is part of giving back I have been blessed to be a lawyer for for what 17 years now so medyo matagal na din and um, the least I can do is to return okay, the blessings that has that, that have been given to me now. okay anyway sige, enough of that okay. uh, some chicas are are just for purposes of ad libs and for break anyway so let's uh, continue so these are the cases of uh, decided by the Supreme Court that will help us understand uh, Komodato and Mutuum. So ito, maganda itong case ng Catholic Vicar versus Court of Appeals. Here, a property was borrowed and a Komodato was created. Ibig sabihin, hiniram without payment. Okay? Kasi walang, walang hindi, hindi siya lease. No, it's not a lease. Now, the Bailey's failure to return the subject matter of Komodato to the bailor did not mean that did not mean adverse possession on the part of the borrower the bailey held in trust the property subject matter of commodatum so adverse claim commences only after the borrower repudiates the trust okay i hope uh, you have also taken the law on trust there are two types of trust express trust and implied trust now a trustee 
recognizes the ownership of the trustor or the beneficiary. So the trustee, the trustee's possession or enjoyment of the thing can never ripen to a claim of ownership unless he repudiates the trust. Pa, paano ko ipaliwanag to? Anyway, sana maintindihan niyo na. Uh, sana naiintindihan niyo. Uh, of, of course, I will assume no, that uh, you have taken the law on trust. That's why I will be discussing this. Um, so, the repudiation of the trust is an act whereby the trustee makes a claim adverse to the very same ownership of the trustor or the trustee or, or of the beneficiary. So, halimbawa, if the trustee prevents the owner or the beneficiary from taking back the property, that's a kind of repudiation. Another kind of repudiation of trust is when the trustee registers the property in his name. Okay, so that's a repudiation of the trust. Kasi hindi na niya nire-respeto or hindi na niya nire-recognize yung ownership ng trustor or beneficiary. So the same is true in comodatum. If the borrower, um, well, during the, 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 the term of the comodatum, the borrower here recognizes that the owner of this thing is the bailor or the lender. When you borrow a book, for as long as you are holding on to the book, you are making use of the book, do not forget that there's a person who owns that book. So, wag mong babuyin yung libro na hiniram mo. Wag mong sulat-sulatan ng kung ano-ano. Okay? Because you are bound to respect the ownership of the lender or the bailor. Now, however, if you sell the book, okay, you are now repudiating the trust. So, in this case of Catholic Vicar, uh, the uh, Supreme Court explained that the mere failure of the borrower to return the book does not ripen or is not considered as a uh, what? As a repudiation of the trust. It should be uh, something that is adverse to the ownership of the bailor and that is the only time when uh, the bailey can start let's say claiming the property for purposes of prescription I mean using the prescriptive period uh, yeah, prescription na naman <laughs> okay so yeah i- i- isulat nyo na lang yung mga oh my god there are so many things I need to learn pala no yes that's true okay so trust does prescription okay prescription how many years does it require for a person who is in possession of a thing that is owned by another okay, to acquire a right over the property? Siyempre, extraordinary prescription yan. So, if real property yan, 30 years. Okay? If personal property yan, 8 years. Okay? So, you have to wait 10 years to have an adverse ownership over the property by the operation of the law on prescription. Okay? So, bahala na kayo dyan. <laughs> Okay, aralin nyo na lang yan. Okay, next, Pahuyo versus Court of Appeals. Okay, in Pahuyo versus Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court said, Comodatum is essentially gratuitous. Even though the contract did not impose rent, it obligated the possessor to maintain the property in good condition. That is an imposition that is inconsistent with the gratuitous nature of Comodatum. Also, a relationship based on tolerance is akin to a landlord-tenant relationship. Okay, now, hindi nyo na, na, na itatanong um, compensation I mean to say the gratuitous nature of a comodatum is absolute ibig sabihin talagang by the generosity of the bailor talaga sige papahiram ko to sa'yo itong libro ko ganyan so, ayan, so enjoy it ayan. papatirahin kita sa bahay ko then enjoy it so dapat wala na rin iniisip yung ano yung yung borrower except of course yung expenses for the necessary repair kasi nga liability or responsibility nga naman yun ng ng borrower no tulad na sinabi natin kay na but if halimbawa the the borrower is bound to okay do something okay that is a, a burden or imposition okay that is not normally expected in accommodatum then that act or that imposition becomes the compensation. Halimbawa, in this case, that the possessor must maintain the property in good condition. Hindi na ordinary expenses yun. Kasi in ordinary expenses, the purpose is to preserve the thing. Okay? So, halimbawa, normal wear and tear. 
nasira ang bulb, nasira ang ilaw mo, namatay yung ilaw mo, papalitan mo lang, that's preservation. Pero in good condition, halimbawa, kailangan bilhan mo ng LED lamp yan, so parang mas, in really good condition, now that's something else. That's no longer ordinary expenses. That's what? Useful expenses. Okay. Similarly, pag ikaw yung in possession of the property, halimbawa, pinahiram sa'yo yung property, yung lupa, wala kang ang binabayarang rent pero ikaw ang magbabayad ng amilyar every year okay now that's a compensation that's an onerous imposition so hindi na siya nagiging komodatum okay it could be a contract of lease but the rent or but the compensation is in the form of paying the amilyar or the real property taxes okay so kaya ayan, sana itanong yan no? itanong talaga sa bar yan masabi ko talaga yes na discuss ko yan sa live ko Kaya, kaya maswerte yung mga nanood or nakinig you know I have been a reviewer of the bar for I think 7 years starting 2014 tama ba? let's do the math 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 ayan so 7 years na ako nagle-lecture sa bar and akala nyo mga examinees lang nasistress ako din nasistress din ako every time pagka second Sunday of the bar so what I do every Sunday of the bar is to go to UST. Um, although I took the bar in Lasal, okay, Lasal pa kami nun, but now of course the bar exams, well until 2019, no? so until 2019, 2019 sa, sa UST pa. But then ngayon we're not we're not sure ke, saan, okay, kasi nga uh, the Supreme Court is considering um, uh, conducting the bar exams in several schools, okay, but. At, at that time, UST pa. Okay, so, every second Sunday, andun na yun ako sa UST. Nag-iikot-ikot na yun ako doon, going to the different bar sites of uh, UE, FEU, Lasal, Lasal, Lyceum. O, baka naman, Lasal, baka ako kailangan nyo ng prof. O, diba? Okay. Um, so, UE, FEU, Lyceum, and uh, Adamson. At syempre, pinupunta ko rin ang bar site ng Siliman University. So, yeah, pinaputa ko rin yan. Lahat yan. Now, syempre, I, I, I get, I, I, I try to get a copy of the exam. Okay. So, syempre, yung mga bar examinees or mga bar, uh, yung mga nandun, mga involved in the bar operations, they're so concerned with, of course, giving food and all that, but ako concerned ako dun sa anong lalabas. Lalo ko iniisip, sana may lumabas dun sa mga itinuro ko. Because, you see, there are so many things to learn in civil law. There are so many books you have to read, okay? But what are the chances that something like this will be asked? Itong case na Pahuyo versus Court of Appeals. Diba? Sometimes meron kang kutub eh. You can, you can only hope na sana lumabas yung diniscuss ko. Ayan. Kasi syempre, para dismaswerte naman yung mga estudyante mo na nag-aral under you, diba? So yun. So, batting average naman natin siguro mga... 20 to 30 percent I think pero pinakamataas I think was 2 years ago siguro naka-anim ako dun but, but when I say uh, yung body average ko syempre doon lang sa mga subjects na itinuro ko for that particular bar season I don't uh, predict questions in the subjects that I don't teach so for example um, at the time di ako nagtuturo ng persons and family relations dun. so bakit ko imamind yung persons and family relations hindi ko hulaan ko anong lalabas na tanong doon ang hulaan ko is tong dito sa um, <coughs> sa sales yung ganyan sabi ko pag sales may question about the sales ang itatanong dyan masedalo ganun ang iniisip ko ganun lang yung prediction so siya hindi ko nahulaan na ah may lalabas about uh, declaration of nullity of marriage on the ground of psychological incapacity wala na hindi ko kasi tinuturo yan so yun so so it's so stressful for 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 a professor. Para kasi you are sending your kid, okay, to this uh, competition, or you are sending your protege to this uh, competition, and hopefully the skills that you taught him will make him win that competition. So ganun ang lagi feeling. So yun. So we'll see. Kapag may tanong ang komodatum, if I were the examiner, I will ask a question. Na parang ganito. Like when is it? a comodatum that is gratuitous or a comodatum that is onerous. Ayan. So, Pahuyo versus Cordova Pills. Alright, next, Spouse Stan versus Villa Paz. So, in the case of Spouse Stan versus Villa Paz, the existence of a contract of loan cannot be denied merely because it is not reduced in writing. Because a contract of loan can be a verbal contract. 
So contracts are binding between the parties whether oral or written. Okay, next, Metrobank versus Rosales. Here, ito na sabi ko na bank deposits are treated as as simple loans. So the relationship between the bank and uh, the borrower is creditor and debtor and not depositor and depositary. So that's why uh, the bank pays the borrower or pays the depositor interest on the money that the bank receives from uh, from the from the depositor. So kaya pagka nag uh, deposit ka sa bank, ba, deposit ka 1000 pesos. So after a month you get like point point 0.23 ganyan something uh, cents, no? So that um, increment in your deposit is the interest rate. Bakit? Because the bank borrowed your money. Okay. So, kaya ang, uh, the, the law that applies to bank deposits uh, is the law on loans. Okay. So, so remember uh, this, uh, these cases. So, from the cases of uh, Catholic Vicar versus Court of Appeals, Pahuyo versus Court of Appeals, Spouses Town versus Sevilla Pass, and Metro Bank versus Rosales. Alright. Okay, so that ends my lecture on loans. Just give me a few seconds or maybe a minute okay, as I prepare for my next topic which is the contract of uh, deposit. Alright. Diyan lang kayo, okay, mawawala.
Ayan, so thank you sa 19 na nanonood today uh, na naandito pa din. So let's uh, discuss now deposit. Okay, so what is a deposit? So a deposit is a contract whereby a person delivers a thing to another called the depository for the principal purpose of safekeeping it with the obligation of returning it when demanded. Okay, so notice that here the purpose is to safekeep the uh, the thing. Okay, now uh, yung bank deposit sa sinabi natin kanina. Well, there's also partly the obligation to safely keep the money that's deposited by the uh, depositor. But then, as we said, the law on loans will apply in the relationship between the bank and the depositor. Now, these deposits that we're talking about in this lecture is the basic or the pure type of deposit which the, the purpose of which is for safekeeping of the thing. Okay? Alright. So, what are the characteristics of deposit? Number one, it is a real contract. At yung sinabi natin kayo that a real contract is a contract that is perfected upon the delivery of the thing. So, the contract of deposit does not arise until after uh, the depositor has delivered the thing to the depository. Now, only movables or personal property can be the object of a deposit. So, generally, real property cannot be the subject of deposit. The exception is judicial deposit. So, what is judicial deposit? Kailan pa naging depositary ang, ang court? No, it's not the court that is the depositary. Rather, the thing is, or the thing subject of the litigation, for example, real property, is placed under litigation. So, by virtue of a writ of attachment, then the object is under the custody of the court and the property will only be released or can only be disposed upon orders or upon the permission of the court. Ayan, so, that's what we call judicial deposit. Now, next is that it is intended for the safekeeping of the thing and it is essentially or generally gratuitous. But, of course, generally... Uh, but of course, in some cases, the depository is uh, allowed some compensation for safely keeping the thing. For example, when you borrow or when you uh, avail of safety deposit boxes with banks and uh, other institutions, then there is a uh, minimal, or, well, hindi naman sabihin minimal, but there's a reasonable uh, compensation for uh, availing the safety deposit, of, uh, safety deposit box of the bank. Okay, generally the depository cannot use the thing. So, because the purpose is safely keeping the thing, then as a depository, you cannot use the thing whether for your purpose or for the purpose of uh, your family or a third person. The exception is Article 1978 of the Civil Code, which states that the depository may be allowed to use the thing if the safekeeping is still the principal purpose of the contract. Now, the classic example for this Article 1978 is when, when you are uh, to deposit your car with a mechanic. Uh, well, deposit ay hindi, ibig sabihin pa, para, para i-repair niya. Ha? Kundi para, wala, i-deposit lang talaga sa kanya para maitago niya, may preserve niya. Um, also, when you, let's say, deposit or leave your car with a pay parking establishment, uh, I, I remember, I think there was a time that I uh, deposited or kept or left left my car with Park and Fly near Naiya 2 um, dahil punong-puno na yung parking ng Naiya 2 and 3 so kaya wala na parking well, because I think that was peak season for travel I think it was Christmas time so iniwan ko dun sa Park and Fly so nalaman ko na ilipat nilipat nila ng pwesto when I when I got the car but of course that's part of safekeeping no the park and fly establishment had the of course the duty or the discretion to transfer the car where it is safest Ayan. so may use kasi na kasama doon sa safekeeping of the car all right now what are the types of deposit we have judicial deposits extrajudicial deposits and under extrajudicial deposits we have voluntary deposits and necessary deposits other deposits we have bank deposits which are actually in the nature of a loan also deposit boxes the safety deposit boxes which is a special type of deposit because it has features similar to a contract of lease all right 
So let's uh, talk about judicial deposit. A judicial deposit or sequestration takes place when an attachment or seizure of property in litigation is ordered by the court. Ayan. So kailan merong request or merong application or prayer for a writ of attachment, a writ of garnishment and all that. Okay, and these um, orders will be issued by the court and he who has the thing in possession or he who has possession of the thing has the duty to safely keep the thing. Okay, for example, if you have funds with a bank and the bank is ordered by the court okay, pursuant to a writ of garnishment, then hindi pwedeng galawin yon ng, ng bank. No? Uh, hindi mo rin pwedeng galawin yun. Okay, so the bank will have to wait for further orders from the court. Ganun din, pagka may writ of attachment, then that property cannot be disposed unless and until the writ of attachment is lifted. We are not to say, however, that the owner of the property cannot make use of the property. Of course, he can enjoy it. He can still use it. But his use or uh, or the transactions related to that property will have to be subject to the results of the litigation. Okay, next. Obligations of depository as appointed by the court are as follows. To take care of the property with the diligence of a good father of a family. And secondly, the depositary cannot be relieved of his responsibility until the litigation is ended or until the court so orders. Now, as far as judicial deposits are concerned, uh, we should refer to the rules of court, uh, particularly on the provisional remedies, uh, provision or rule under the rules of court for more details or for more provisions applicable to judicial deposits. All right, let's now talk about voluntary deposits. So, a voluntary deposit is the more common type of deposit. So, voluntary deposit is that wherein the delivery is made by the will of the depositor. It's voluntary because it is uh, freely made or freely done by the depositor. So, what are the characteristics? Generally, the depositor must be the owner of the thing deposited. Well, of course, there are exceptions. For example, a person who has been given the right to use the property by any contract whether um, it's commodatum or lessee and the owner allows him to deposit the thing for safekeeping for example meron kang hiniram na sasakyan uh, by virtue of a commodatum then aalis ka babiyahe ka then you are allowed to deposit it with a depository for because syempre there is a need to you know pursue one to your duty as a borrower to take care of the thing with the diligence of a good father of a family so if it is uh, or if it will be risky to leave it at home while you are away then of course part of that diligence is to deposit it with someone who can take care of the thing or who can safely keep the thing okay next the depository cannot dispute the title of the depositor to the thing deposited Kaya the depositor or the depository cannot claim adverse ownership or adverse title to the thing deposited because from the inception of the contract until the end of the contract of deposit that depository recognizes the ownership of the depositor over the thing deposited okay and sino pa pa ang bagong pumasok dito okay hi reina jenica as well as jermaine obieta and yeah, thank you for watching and kapit lang Ayan, maganda to topic ng deposit okay next <coughs> valid a deposit a voluntary deposit is valid even if the depository is legally incapacitated now the contract is merely voidable okay remember obligations and contracts again if you want you can watch that video um nasa youtube channel ko na mahanapin yung obligations and contracts part 1 because part 2 which is uh which was recorded live um talks about contracts doon kay sa part 1 doon yung ma, ma hindi sa part 2 pala yung voidable contracts because uh, a voidable contract is one of the five five or four void voidable is one enforceable okay part of the four voidable con four defective contracts so we said that when one party is legally incapacitated let's say a minor or an insane person the contract is merely voidable okay so a deposit made by a minor is valid until annulled by his guardian okay but there is a um, rule on estoppel applicable now when a minor 
enters into a contract with an adult if that minor um, appears to be ad an adult your physical features niya mukha na siya adult and also he induced uh, the other party to believe that he is already an adult then stop na yung minor na yon but then of course let's not talk about estoppel if we are to say that the contract is voidable so there now if the depository on the other hand is the one who is incapacitated the depositor shall only have the right to recover the thing while it is in the possession of the depository third persons in good faith are protected pero ano ibig sabihin nung hindi na ba pwedeng kunin ng depositor yung property in case of uh, let's say syempre hindi pa naman nalilipat yung, yung ownership it depends no if that um uh, property is uh, in the possession of the third person without that third first person having acquired ownership over the property then pwede pang i-recover yun but if the third person has acquired it by any legal title and he is in good faith then it can be recovered provided there is a payment of uh, compensation or damages to the third person kasi protected yung third person Anyway, okay, that's something else. Ah. Um, ma, ano na yan, it will be touching on the law on sales. Na. Okay, anyway, so let's not talk about the obligations of the depository. So the first obligation is to keep the thing safely. In other words, to take care of the thing. That's, after all, the main uh, purpose of a contract of deposit. Next is to return the thing deposited. Okay, because the depository does not acquire ownership so he merely receives it with the you know expectation that the thing will have to be taken back by the depositor now to return the thing in the same condition uh, to return the thing in the same condition as the thing was delivered okay closed and sealed okay he may however retain the thing in pledge until the full payment of what may be due him by reason of the deposit so what may what may be these um, fees or expenses that the depository may claim against uh, the depositor may kita natin later on yung mga damages no? but if the depository doesn't have those claims then he has uh, no obligation or he has no right to retain the thing he has to return it because that's consistent with his obligation to just safely keep the thing now next he shall be liable for loss okay now generally fortuitous events uh, extinguish the obligation and that the person who is in custody of the thing shall not be liable for loss but not in this case just like in comodatum the borrower is liable for loss even if it is caused by fortuitous event so ganun din in a deposit the depositary shall be liable for loss even if the loss is caused by a uh, by a fortuitous event in the following cases first if it is so stipulated in other words if the depositary assumes the risk of loss even for or even due to fortuitous events next if he uses the thing without the depositor's permission so parehas din dun sa komodatum diba? if the borrower uses the thing without the permission of the uh, lender or the bailor next if he delays the return of the thing ganun din sa komodatum and also he al if he allows others to use it so ganun din sa komodatum because again halos parehas ang komodatum at saka ang depositary uh, or deposit except that in komodatum the borrower can use it Okay, because that's the essence or the main purpose of comodatum. In depository, however, or in deposits, the depository is only bound to keep it, is only allowed to keep it but not use it. Okay, another uh, other obligations are <coughs> not to deposit the thing with a third person. Okay, so it's just talagang merong right to keep the thing next is to notify the depositor and get his permission before changing the way of the deposit so how do you change or ano big sabihin ng change the way of the deposit for example uh, if the deposit involves keeping the thing in a warehouse but this time kailangan ilipat sa isang open space then the depository has to inform the depositor and the depositor has to give his consent otherwise if he cannot give his consent or if he doesn't consent to it then the thing must be returned to the depositor 
Next, to collect principal and interests on certificates, bonds, securities, or investments when they fall due. This is in case what is deposited is an intangible right or intangible thing. And if this um, earn interest, earn income, then those income may be collected by the depository, but they have to be accounted for and must be remitted or given to the depositor. Okay, next is obligation not to use the thing without the express permission of the depositor except or un, uh, unless dun sa sinasabi nating the use of the thing is still related to the deposit or the safekeeping of the thing next is to notify the true owner of the thing if known if the thing deposited was discovered to be stolen by the depositor okay now we said earlier that the depository has uh, or will recognize or must recognize the ownership of the uh, of the depositor and he cannot claim otherwise but this is only with respect to the adverse claim by the depository so he cannot deny or stop na siya from denying the ownership of the depositor that is in case kung siya nga mismo yung magkiklaim ng adverse ownership. So, hindi niya pwedeng i-claim kahit, kahit yung adverse, uh, kahit yung extraordinary prescription, hindi niya magagamit yon because he recognizes the ownership of the owner unless he repudiates the trust, no? Like what I said in uh, loans or in comodatum. But this is a different situation. Here, the depository is made aware that ipa pala ang may-ari nitong itong object na to okay so if uh, he is aware of who the real owner is he has to tell the real owner sasabihan yung real owner na i have in my possession something that might be your property so but then the question is ano ang gagawin ngayon ng deposit the, ng uh, depository should he turn over the thing to the real owner the answer is no because if he delivers the thing to uh, this uh, different person he violates now the contract of deposit and also he can be charged with theft because he transfers no hindi, hindi theft estafa i'm sorry so, kung baka may mga nag-aaral dyan ng criminal law you should remember the difference between estafa and theft no so here because merong juridical possession uh si depositary if he converts the thing or he, if he transfers the thing without the uh, permission of the depositor then he is liable for estafa okay anyway so hindi niya pwede ibigay dun sa tao na sa tingin niya ay, ay tunay na may ari nagmamayari ng property because he will violate the contract of deposit at the same time he will also he could be charged with estafa so what he should do is just inform the real owner so that the real owner can avail of his legal remedies in other words he can file an action against the depositor to recover the property of course pwede rin niya isama as nominal party si depositary so that at the end of the case or at the end of the proceedings the court can also issue an order directing the depositary to turn over the property to the real owner okay anyway if however the depositor after knowing that uh, the depository has informed uh, the uh, true owner okay, of the fact of the deposit and the depositor insists that I am the owner, pwedeng mag-file ng interpleader case si depository. Now, I'm sure ang tanong nyo dyan, bakit pa magbabother? Why should the depository bother himself with the issue of ownership between uh, the depositor and the depositor between the depositor and the lawful owner the purpose is to protect his interest to protect his rights now as a uh, depository of course there are obligations um, as a consequence of the deposit so if he can file an interpleader case and uh, allow the depositor and the third person to thresh out their differences and then after due proceedings the court will rule who is the rightful owner then the depository can return the thing to the rightful owner pero kung in that interpleader case the depositor is adjudged as the real owner then tuloy pa rin yung kontrata okay pero pag sinabi ng court that the real owner is the other party 
then the depository can turn over that thing to the real owner. Okay? Alright. Now, what are the obligations naman of the depositor? Okay, so first is to reimburse the depository for expenses for preservation if the deposit is gratuitous. Okay, now if the uh, depository is onerous or with compensation, the depositor should also pay the depository uh, the costs or the expenses for uh, the deposit. Also to indemnify the depository for loss caused by the character of the thing. So ito yung mga claims ng depository against the depositor which entitles the depository to retain the thing in pledge okay dun sa komodatum sabi lang to retain the thing without saying to retain the thing in pledge okay so parang sa komodatum pwede lang uh, he can retain the thing until after the borrow after the bailor has reimbursed the borrower for the damages suffered because of the flaws or hidden defects of the uh, the thing but in deposit okay if the depository is entitled to payment of compensation as well as when he suffered losses because of the dangerous character of the thing and bawa the thing is poisonous pala without the depository knowing the poisonous nature of the thing then he is entitled to damages so dalawa ngayon i-claim niya sa depositor payment as depository as well as damages if the depositor doesn't pay then he can sell the thing in deposit because the losses retain the thing by way of pledge so pledge is an accessory contract is it is a security for the payment of an obligation in money so the thing can be sold uh, in an auction sale the proceeds thereof to be applied to the unpaid compensation as well as to the unpaid damages whatever it whatever is um, whatever remains from uh, the uh, proceeds of the sale shall of course be turned over to the depositor now of course the depositor can prevent that okay by paying the depository what is due him okay now let's talk about extinguishment of voluntary deposit so a voluntary deposit will be extinguished by loss or destruction of the thing okay now of course as we have said earlier uh, the depository may still be liable for the uh, loss of the thing even if due to fortuitous event but with the loss of the thing syempre wala nang obligation to safely keep the thing the depository will just have to pay damages to the depositor okay but their relationship as far as uh, safely keeping the thing is concerned it's already terminated now in case of gratuitous deposit upon the death of either party Okay, so the contract of deposit is also a personal contract in case of gratuitous deposit. But if it is an onerous deposit, ibig sabihin, if the depositor pays the, the depository um, uh, some payment for the safekeeping of the thing, then that obligation can be transmitted to the heirs of the depository. Okay? So if the depository, however, is a corporation, if the corporation is dissolved, Ayan, yan ang problema. If the corporation is dissolved, wala namang heirs yung corporation. So even if the corporation, even if the deposit, that the contract of deposit is onerous, but if the depository has no heirs, or if uh, there is no succeeding, ano ba tawag yun? Succeeding or acquiring, okay, acquiring corporation, then the contract is extinguished and the thing should be returned to the depositor. So what are the other causes for extinguishment of voluntary deposits we have expiration of the period okay also uh, demand at the will of the depositor so the depositor can demand the return of the deposit so almost similar to a precarium it's just that precarium relates to accommodatum also mutual withdrawal from the contract so parang rescission but this time it's of course mutual fulfillment of the purpose of the deposit Okay, so for example, when you deposited uh, the car while you are on travel, when you return, of course, the purpose of the deposit is already terminated. You can get back, as a depositor, you can get back the thing deposited. And fulfillment of a resolutory condition. A resolutory condition is a condition the happening of which terminates the contract. 
So, halimbawa, I will deposit to you the thing, okay, or I will uh, leave to you, let's say, my car until uh, I, um, I am able to construct a garage. So, that is a resolutory condition. When the garage is fully constructed, then the obligation or the contract of deposit is terminated. So, isosoli na ngayon ni depositary or babawiin na ni depositor yung kotse. Okay, now let's talk about necessary deposit. Is necessary deposit similar to involuntary deposit? Well, yes. Okay. Why is it involuntary? Kasi wala ka namang will. Okay, wala kang free, uh, free choice on the matter. So, the deposit is mandatory. But, syempre, ginamit lang ng batas necessary deposit. Kasi pag sinayang mo na may involuntary deposit, parang against your will. But, necessary deposit is done or made in compliance with a legal obligation. So, for example, when it is in custodial lehis or when uh, it is under litigation, that's also a necessary deposit. So, katulad din sa judicial deposit. Okay, also, it takes place on the occasion of any calamity such as fire, storm, flood, pillage, shipwreck, or other similar events. Now, the law contemplates a situation where uh, the government requires, well, not just the government, maybe even private persons will uh, require the, the deposit of you know, certain personal properties in case of um, calamities. Pero wala tayo niyan. Unfortunately, uh, of course, our focus is more on the lives of people. So, in case of, ano, in case of calamities, we have evacuation centers. It would have been good, sana, no, if the government can can have some provisions for cars. Bawa, pag may bagina, then let's say a government warehouse will be opened para doon mo ipark yung mga sasakyan. Doon mo ipapark, doon, doon ipapark ng mga tao yung mga sasakyan nila and then they will go to an evacuation center para sa, of course, safety din nila. So, yun, that would be a necessary deposit, ideally. No? But, uh, of course, we don't have that. Maybe it could be done. No? Maganda sana yung, we should also take care of our people's properties, not just the lives of our people. Okay? Now, another type of necessary deposit, which is more, of course, uh, well, I wouldn't say popular, but more relatable. Kasi nga, di ba, we are not really related to or hindi tayo masyado involved in uh, judicial deposits as well as deposits on the occasion of natural calamities. Pero dito tayo sa pangatlo na medyo relatable, okay? where we can relate. So, deposits made by travelers in hotels or inns. Okay? Uh, hotels, kasama na dyan apartments. Basta those transient places where you stay for a few days, ganyan, uh, because of some travel, you know, or even business travel, no? Basta if the purpose is um, temporary. But then if you are renting a house <coughs> as a place of abode, ibig sabihin, nag-rent ka sa Makati because doon ka nag-aaral, ganyan. If you're from, let's say, Batangas, so you uh, rented a place in Makati, let's say a studio apartment in a condominium building, hindi po siya considered hotel or inn. So therefore, it's not considered or it's not covered by the law on necessary deposit. The law on necessary deposit applies to travelers okay, with respect to their personal belongings in hotels or inns or motels. Okay? Now, for hotel keepers, so because of this, the hotel keepers would be liable as depositaries. Okay, so by the way, what will be covered by the deposits with um, with these hotels? So, not just your personal stuff, but personal stuff, of course, yung damit mo, laptop mo, camera mo, ano pa ba dinadala mo pag bumabiyahe ka? Toiletries? Uh, well, of course, most probably you will not be bringing toiletries kasi yung toiletries ng hotel ang gagamitin mo. Or worse, may dalak ng sarili mong toiletries kasi yung toiletries ng hotel, iuuwi mo. <laughs> Di ba? Kasi may collection ka sa bahay ng mga toiletries ng mga hotel. Tapos pag may bisita ka, ituturo mo. Okay, so these toiletries I got from Conrad. Okay, these toiletries I got from Sofitel. Okay, these toiletries I got from Fairmont in Makati. O, di ba? Social. Ayan flex mo lang talaga yung mga remembrance mo from the hotels. Because yun na naman talaga pwede mong iuwi. Hindi mo pwede iuwi yung mga tuwalya and all that, di ba? 
simply you're not allowed to do that because if you do that of course you'll be charged with theft all right next so your personal stuff but not only personal stuff but also vehicles animals and articles introduced or placed in the annexes of the hotel so kasama nga dyan yung sasakyan mo when you park your cars at the parking lots of these hotels a necessary deposit is also created so the hotel will be liable for the loss of the car okay, even if due to fortuitous event also you are you can expect that the car will be safely kept and the hotel will return to you the car when so demanded okay or when the contract of deposit is extinguished so paano nga ba may extinguish yung contract of deposit marami ito yung binanggit but as far as staying in hotels is concerned when the purpose of the deposit which is the stay in the hotel is terminated or is accomplished so isosoli na niya yun now so magbabayad ba or dapat ba may bayad kasi nga di ba supposed to be it's a gratuitous deposit well sinabi natin a contract of deposit is essentially or generally gratuitous but then in some cases the depository may also charge fees for the safekeeping of the things in deposit kaya pwede mag charge ng parking fee ang hotel for the car that you bring with you okay but merong contract of deposit so yun ang maganda doon diba so the hotel is liable in case of loss or damage to your car okay notwithstanding ano pa man ang sabihin ng hotel Okay, having said that, ba, isipin nyo, bakit sa mga malls may ganong may exception sa mga parking ticket na nakalagay that the parking establishment is not liable? Well, of course, it's a, it's a parking in a mall. It's a parking place in a mall. It's not a parking uh, facility of a hotel. So, yung deposit of cars... Um, uh, considered as necessary deposit applicable lang yun to cars brought by travelers who check in in the hotel so kung ikaw shopper ka lang sa SM halimbawa when you bring your car to SM you park it at the parking lot of SM hindi po siya covered by the law on necessary deposit so you are liable because what your what the contract is or the contract there is just a contract of lease no? because you are leasing a spot Okay, where you park the car so kaya may bayad ka dun sa spot na yon. so you're leasing it so you're, you are liable for all damages or um, losses okay, by or arising from the use of that leased premises or leased spot so hindi po siya necessary deposit anyway so ano pa okay now let's talk about yung liability ng hotel keepers the hotel keeper is liable on as depository if the following elements are present number one they have been previously in informed about the effects brought about by, brought by the guests so if you want to make the hotel liable as a depository okay you as a traveler must inform the the hotel of what you're bringing with you so you have to be informed the hotel has to be informed that you are bringing let's say um a laptop a camera what else um coche animals pets and all that because if the hotel is not informed then there is no contract of deposit so it is not liable for loss or damage to this personal stuff okay next the depositor or the guest Okay, must have taken the precautions necessary regarding the safekeeping. So, you have to follow the instructions of the hotel. Ano ba usually ang instructions ng hotel? Number one, Sir or ma'am, please safely lock the door of your car once you go out. So, iti-check mo, paglabas mo, kailangan nakalock yun. Diba? Pero yung iba, nakakalimuta, kaya lang automatic lock yan. Pero yes, supposedly automatic lock yan, especially when you're using a key card. So, pag yung keycard kasi, uh, nag-open siya sa labas. So, without the keycard, paglabas mo, maglalaki automatic. But if you are being, uh, if you are uh, staying at a hotel where the doors or the doorknobs are opened with a key, so make sure that when you go out, you lock it. Kasi pag na-unlock mo siya when you get in, naka-unlock pa rin siya. So, anyway, that's very basic. Why am I even discussing that? So, anyway, so there. So, you have to follow the precautions given to you by the hotel. Now, the second 
precaution, the second recommendation given to you by the hotel is of course to make use of the safety deposit boxes. If you are told to make use of the safety deposit boxes, you have to make use of the safety deposit box. Kasi that's part of the precaution. Pag hindi mo ginamit yan at, hindi, at naiwan mo yan somewhere, then the hotel is not liable. Why? Because you did not follow the safety precautions given. So those these two elements should be present should be present or should be followed. All right. So when those two elements are followed or observed, then the hotel keeper is a depository, okay? Now, as a depository, when is it liable? It is liable for the loss or injury caused by the servants or employees of the hotel. And second, when the loss or injury is caused by strangers including hotel guests or even outsiders. Yan. So, ang laki ng liability imposed on hotels. Okay? So, uh, on the part of the hotels, if you are one who is maintaining a hotel, it's best to know talaga kung naging depositary ka by reason of you know, these travelers staying in your hotel. So, dapat proactive ka as a hotel owner. You have to ask the guests, Sir, Ma'am, Okay. Uh, of course, aside from asking, how many days will you or how many nights will you be staying and how would you pay for your accommodation, etc. Kailan tanungin mo talaga kaagad, ma'am, are you bringing with you personal uh, belongings, valuable personal belongings? Because if you are, these are our precautionary measures. Please follow these precautionary measures. So if they say yes, then you have to ask them to declare these uh, personal belongings now, pag hindi nila sinabi sa iyo, you have to ask them to sign a waiver ask them please sign a waiver na this hotel is not liable should you have brought personal belongings which were not you know, uh, given to our knowledge ibig sabihin, which were not you know, which we were not made known or which were not made known to us Yan. so wala pumirma sila doon and syempre, pag waiver yan, matatakot na yung mga yan. Bakit ako mag-waiver? O sige na nga, sabihin ko na nga sa'yo kung anong dala ko. May dala akong drugs. Okay. Pagka ganun, syempre, refuse entry agad. Because as a hotel, hindi mo sila pwede papasukin doon. And then let them do their stuff, di ba? So, kaya it, it's, it's good then that you ask them what they're bringing with them. So that you will not be in trouble as a hotel. I mean, di ba? Uh, you can also be complicit in the crime. Eh? Just read Republic Act 9165. The hotel can be charged as a drug den. So, kaya, you know, if you are uh, an operator of a hotel, just, you know, be, be strict about it. It's better safe than sorry. So, yun. Tapos, next is that, kung wala naman pala silang dinadalang, ano, um, uh, personal, uh, tawag nito, illicit uh, contrabands, ganyan, then at least uh, you would be able to know if you will be liable as a depositary. So, kaya, yun. You have to insist. And, of course, be kind. Kailangan maganda naman yung approach. Maka na friendly ka pa din. Kasi mamaya, syempre, gawan kayo ng bad review. Wala na, wala na magstay sa hotel niya, di ba? So, there. So, once you're a depository, then, as a hotel, you have to be very, very vigilant. No? So, make sure that you check the hallways. Make sure that, uh, of course, of course, huwag naman masyadong snoopy. No? Huwag naman masyadong uh, bantay sarado because that would be invading the privacy of your guests. So, wag naman yung every time lumalabas yung guest na tunayin nyo, Sir, alis na ba kayo? Or babalik pa ba kayo? Ganyan, ganyan. Kasi, syempre, di ba? They should be allowed to freely go, you know, in and out of the hotel. So, anyway, so there. Because if the hotel is made a depository, ang pinaka mahirap dito yung yung bang uh, you will be liable for the losses or injury caused by strangers okay not just the hotel guests yung mga hotel guests mako-control mo yun eh kasi meron kang logbook so you can check sino bang katabi uh, which room or who occupied the room beside the room of this guest whose property or whose personal belongings were stolen so at least mati-check mo kung sino e what if stranger yan di ba like pumasok lang sa hotel entrance, umakyat, tapos ninakaw yung mga gamit. Even though you had no control, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, well, we had no, we have no control over the people who go in and out of the hotel. 
but because the law imposes that liability on your part then you are liable it's not a defense now you are not able to control who comes in and out of the hotel ayan kaya mahirap mahirap magkaroon ng hotel talaga Okay, kaya po dapat tinitimbang bago lumabas ng hotel. Baka nag-uwi ng creep or door na. True. Ayan, hi, Miss Marnil. Ayan, iba naman yun. Okay. Theft naman yun. Okay. Uh, meron, meron kasi mga ganyang ano talaga eh. Na sobrang nagandahan sila sa, sa ano ba, usually, pag mga luxurious hotel, kung ano, ano mga nasa side table, di ba? Meron. Siyempre, Bible. Di ba? May mga drawers ganyan. Ewan ko lang, lahat ata, well, in other countries, they don't put Bibles in their, in their, ano, in their uh, drawers. Pero dito sa Pilipinas talaga, halos lahat ng mga hotel may mga Bible. Ayan. So, may Bible, ano pa, ball, well, yung ball pen, lapis, at saka stationary, at saka envelope, pwede mo iuwi yun. Ayan. Uh, problema nga lang, pag inuwi mo yun, um, gagamitin mo ba? Ayan. So, you know, my my advice is do not hoard stuff. Ayan. Just 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 get what you need. No, nabawa, yung mga shampoo ganyan, okay lang shampoo sa board, but don't bring the toalya. In hotels, especially luxury hotels, iba-ibang hotel 'yan. Ay, iba-ibang hotel, iba towels 'yan. May mahabang towel which is your body towels, may may ising towel, so those are your hand towels. At merong isang towel na may embroidery na para siyang body towel pero ang dami niya embroidery do not use that on your body because that's supposed to be used on the floor okay so ilalagay niya sa floor so yun pero kasi meron akong kilala na ginamit niya yung, yung, yung towel na para sa sahig sa katawan niya so sabi sa kanya hala hindi na ba yung para sa katawan para yan sa floor because yung para sa katawan walang embroidery yun walang embroidery sa gitna yun talagang plain lang siyang soft cotton ganyan pero yung para sa sahig magaspang yun Ayan. anyway at saka normally isa lang siya kung uh, ang hotel kasi they all the, the, hot, the towels in a hotel room always go in pairs so dalawang body towel dalawang hand towel dalawang face towel ganyan they always go in pairs pero may iisa talagang towel na you know, walang partner so para sa sahig yun okay so yun wag kayo mag-uwi ng mga towels because that's, that would be theft so anyway so going back so yun ang problema no uh, if you are a hotel keeper you will be liable for loss or injury caused by strangers so it's best that you make sure that you are a depository and you are um, you have already taken or you have followed the steps no by informing these guests of the precautionary measures now in addition to telling these guests of the precautionary measures the hotel should also place uh, announcements no like you know please do not uh, leave your things um unattended okay okay uh tandaan yung sinabi ko posters saying please do not leave your things unattended bakit Hintay lang kayo kasi meron pa tayo i-discuss dyan about posters. Okay. However, in the following cases, the hotel keeper is not liable. Number one, if the cause is force majeure, okay, in other words, fortuitous event. For example, may bagyo, may earthquake, may tsunami. Okay. Imagine the tsunami in 2006. Was it 2006? Yes, the um, Southeast Asian tsunami. So, uh, and dahil mga resorts na na-damage in Phuket, in Indonesia, um, in uh, somewhere in India. Yung, well, the tsunami started in the Indian Ocean. So, talaga nag-spread all the way to uh, Thailand and uh, Indonesia, including Bali. Ayan. So, anyway, so that would be a fortuitous event. So, if loss or damage to the belongings of the hotel guests was due to a fortuitous event, then the hotel is not liable. Okay? Hindi kasi siya katulad sa ordinary deposit. Okay. Anyway, next is the cause of the loss or damage is robbery with use of firearm or through irresistible force. So, if the investigation, if, alibawa, may nawalan ng gamit, no? And the investigation shows that the door, that the doorknob was uh, damaged, so that's robbery with force upon things. Pero, pag the law, if the loss happened without any force upon the doorknob or upon the door or upon the window of the room, in other words, theft yun, so the hotel is liable. 
So the hotel is not liable if it's robbery. So remember the difference between theft and robbery. Theft is a simple taking of a property without the consent of the owner. Robbery is taking of a property without the consent of the owner but with force upon things or intimidation of persons. Yeah, kaya yung mga tinututukan ng kutsilyo, ng baril, ganyan, or yung sinisira, yung mga bintana, yung mga pinto, that's robbery for which the hotel is not liable. Okay, next is if the cause of the loss is the act or the acts of the guest and also if the cause of the loss is the character of the thing. So, halimbawa, due to negligence or carelessness of the owner, hindi niya na iwang na hindi niya na lock yung pinto. Okay? So, siyempre, the proximate cause there is his negligence. Also, if the thing is perishable, dala siya ng gulay halimbawa sa sa kwarto niya, ewan ko anong klasing gulay yun at bakit kailangan niya ng gulay sa kwarto. Anyway, hindi. Siyempre, iuwi niya sa kanila yon So, siyempre, nag-travel lang siya. It's just a stopover. So, nandun pa rin yung gulay. Anyway, so, nabulok ngayon yung gulay. So, you cannot, you know, blame the hotel for the uh, damage or injury to your vegetable uh, if by the nature of that vegetable, it will really uh, die or wilt because of uh, time. Alright. Okay. Ito na ngayon yung posting of exculpatory notices. So, the hotel is not uh, exonerated or exempted from liability okay if uh, the hotel states that the hotel shall not be liable in case of loss or damage to the personal belongings of the hotel guests ayan pag ganun ang tenor whereby it tries to exempt itself from liability that's not valid okay but if the post if the posters are to the effect that okay, it's just a reminder for the um, uh, guests to take care of the thing and not leave their personal belongings unattended valid yung mga posters na yun because it's a reminder and after all by reminding these guests so they're telling the guests to be also be vigilant but at the same time the hotel should also be vigilant by of course making sure that the hotel is secured by of course checking who comes in and out of the hotel and again by constantly reminding the guests okay to um make sure that the doors are locked and to make use of their hotel uh, to make use of the hotel's safety deposit boxes pero yeah, totoo, nakaka-stress din talaga maging hotel, no? maging owner at operator ng hotel you're not only concerned with uh, occupancy, at the same time you're also concerned about the safety and uh, yeah, the safety of the guests as well as, well as their uh, belongings Pero ganun talaga eh. Now, syempre, nakakapagtaka rin bakit may mga hotel guests na ang dami-daming dala. I mean, well, of course, it's natural. It's normal if they bring clothes. But then, why would they bring expensive things like jewelry? Okay. Uh, I had a personal case. This case I handled. Um, my client was a resort in Zambales. So, they were sued by uh, a foreign guest. Okay. The foreign guest brought... Uh, uh, brought gold bars imagine that gold bars uh, statue um, a statue of a, a Buddha statue again made of gold tas meron din siyang DSLR camera meron siyang ka, uh, laptop at uh, saka meron siyang dollars na dala so um, they checked in this foreign national and his girlfriend checked in at around midnight and then uh, the following morning nagwawala na sila nagwawala na kasi nawala na daw lahat as in lahat lahat ng dala nila nawala daw so ayun so syempre uh, a case was filed uh, before the uh, regional trial court and then uh, it was uh, okay I am free to talk about this hindi na po ito governed by the rule on sub judice because tapos na po at napanalo ko po siya sa court of appeals ayan so natalo sila sa regional trial court hindi po ako may hawak ng kaso but then uh, he, of course hinawakan ko ng pagdating na ng court of appeals I was engaged to do the appeal and I won the case for them in the appeal. Sa pwede ko hindi discuss ko yung technicalities ng case saka bakit kami nanalo. But the thing is, uh, basically, it's just that the rules no, on deposits were not uh, followed kasi hindi alam ng hotel, di alam ng resort na may dala sila. 
ayun because they check in at 12 midnight and then also um, when it was uh, checked the room was uh, not locked at the time of the at the time of the theft so ibig sabihin hindi na lock ng maayos na hotel guest so yun duralex said lex the law works for both parties both for the hotel and both for the guest now is it unfair no the law is fair it is it seeks to strike a balance between the interests of the hotel as well as the guests but in this case since the guest wasn't able to prove negligence on the part of the hotel so you cannot charge the hotel with damages because that would be unfair also for the hotel to pay where in fact it was not negligent in the first place all right so we have uh the case the next uh topic it didn't topic but the next thing is uh, hotel keepers right of retention so what is this right of retention so the hotel keeper has a right to retain the things brought into the hotel by the guest as a security for the credits on account for lodging for supplies and including uh, for food now that is uh, as far as the civil liability is concerned now the hotel's right of retention here is the same as the borrower's right of retention in comodatum hindi siya katulad ng right of retention in a normal or ordinary deposit because in a normal or ordinary deposit the depository can sell okay those things in deposit during or in a public auction and to apply the proceeds of the sale for payment of the uh, claims of the depository but in case of hotels the hotel can only keep them uh, by you know uh, can retain them as a security lang and then uh, release them only after the hotel guests have paid okay, the uh, hotel bills as well as the restaurant bills if any okay now question bakit magkaiba eh, it's still under the law on deposit well that's the law no whether it was by inadvertence uh, hindi na isama ng ng legislature yung by way of pledge okay dito yung by, yung words na by way of pledge nandun sa ordinary deposit now hindi pa natin pwedeng gamitin dito kasi under din naman sa law on deposit hindi because that was a general rule this is a special rule and between a general rule and a special rule the special rule prevails over the general rule okay so this special rule applies to hotel hotels okay but at any rate the hotel can file a criminal case for estafa so meron naman siyang uh, remedy doon ayaw nyo talaga magbayad ha pues i will keep your belongings ay ilalagay lang namin sa warehouse hindi nga lang namin mabibenta ito so hindi kami makakasingil sa inyo but that's okay uh, mababawi din namin yan pera lang yan eh but we will file a case for estafa against you o ayan mababawi nyo pa ba yung freedom nyo well now that's a risk the hotel guest has to take all right so that ends my lecture on deposit and so i hope uh, you learned something important today and uh, yeah so today we learned about loans and deposits so loans so i hope ngayon medyo familiar na sir at least medyo naintindihan niyo na yung concept of comodatum mutuum and also uh, we also discussed about deposit especially deposit uh, involving hotels ganyan medyo close sa heart ko kasi yung mga hotels na yan because before this pandemic wala na akong ginawa kundi mag, kundi mag, mag travel at mag stay sa mga hotels ayan but uh, I had one year to use up all the hotel toiletries that I hoarded through the years ayan so but then we just hope that you know the times will change the world will be safer again for us all to travel but uh, yeah I'm just happy I was able to do the things I that I love to do before this pandemic and so medyo change of focus lang tayo, change of direction uh, where should we put our energy into now that we are in a pandemic so we put everything where uh, we are most uh, useful and that is through of course blogging and through lecture and through sharing our knowledge but one day okay, in the future things will be better okay uh, I'm sure everyone believes in higher being and the higher being will of course uh, change things for the better okay anyway um, 
this is my last day of lecture for the free online law school of the Philippines it's a Facebook page you might want to follow that too now if you're watching me as my uh, follower in my attorney Al Jumrani Facebook page or as my subscriber in this channel the house of law thank you very much for following and for you know watching this two-day live lecture series and again uh, you can still expect more videos from me or maybe some live lectures especially pag papalapit na tayo ng papalapit sa November 2021 bar exams so that's it for now it's 4 o'clock um, it's still a Sunday so thank you very much for watching I hope you have a great uh, Sunday ahead of you and also I hope you have a great Monday okay, starting tomorrow bye guys God bless you all Oh, 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 oh,